and it's saying that it does have the potential uh, for a tornado warning uh, for a tornado to be with that. So that's what we're watching right now, even though uh, the uh, signature isn't strong enough right now to issue a, a new tornado warning uh, as it comes into Harrelson County and also into Carroll County. But if that rotation holds together, they may have to upgrade that. Or if it cycles back up, they may have to upgrade this to a tornado warning. Chris, uh, uh, yeah, go ahead, ask, Melissa. Yeah, I wanted to ask you a question. Of course, we all know there are so many transplants to Metro Atlanta. And again, it's a very basic question. But can you explain the difference between a watch and a warning for someone who's just arriving here or maybe even here on business and may not understand the difference? Yeah, a watch simply means that conditions are likely for tornadoes to occur and we are in a tornado watch here in North Georgia right now. I think I can even, let me show you. So that's the tornado watch. The red box is extended over a little bit. So these are the counties now with that extension of the tornado watch. A tornado watch simply means just watch, be aware. There is the potential due to our atmospheric conditions, due to the storm system coming in here, that any of these counties in yellow could have a tornado that could occur. It means have a plan ready. Don't wait until a warning is issued to figure out, oh, I wonder what I'm gonna do. Have your plan ready now and know how you're gonna react, know where your safe place is going to be, and then um, be able to act on that if a warning is issued. And so what we have out there right now, I'll go backwards here, this is a tornado warning that is over in Cleburne County, Alabama. That means that we have indicated on radar circulation or we have confirmation of damage. And at this point, this is radar indicated where our radar was showing some circulation there that they feel confident enough that they should let people know that there is a tornado most likely within this storm and some rotation in the storm. So the warning means that it has been indicated on radar or visually spotted on radar, or we see what is called a TDS signature, a tornado debris signature within radar. Uh, that is where we have uh, most likely a tornado that's been coming through. And so the warning means now's the time to take cover if you're in the path of the storm. And then a severe thunderstorm warning means that there are winds that are uh, 57 miles an hour or greater and, or hail an inch, lar or an inch or larger and we are seeing that very large hail with that core as it's crossing over the line from Alabama and into Georgia. So that's the difference there between the watch and warning. The watch simply means just watch out. It usually covers multiple counties for a longer period of time. And then the warning usually includes a, a few counties and a shorter amount of time because that's where we're able to focus in on more of a path of that system that is moving on through. So you, you think know, that's a good uh, answer to that yeah, question? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And, and very Chris, thorough. Chris, I'm one of those transplants here to um, Metro Atlanta. This morning, I'm living in Roswell, and this morning, I actually heard the warning itself. You heard the siren for I the first I heard the time? siren for the first time. Wasn't mm -hmm. quite sure what that was all about. Of course, you know, I have the 11 Alive app, and I was able to see that there was a warning uh, taking place in Roswell. So for folks who may have a power outage, would they actually hear that siren? Is that, or do they play that often, or how does that work? Well, different counties and different municipalities have different rules about when they sound their um, sirens. Uh, some people do them only for tornado warnings, and I think that's the only, uh, that's what I would do. I would only issue that only for tornado warnings because we do have numerous severe thunderstorm warnings, and if you did it for every severe thunderstorm warning, people would stop paying attention to them. Uh, but different counties, different municipalities have different rules for that. Now, here's the deal. Uh, you can't depend on a siren to let you know what's going to happen. So don't don't give yourself a false sense of security and think, oh, I'm just going to wait till the siren sounds before I act. Uh, you know, with our soundproof homes that we have right now and thick windows, um, we're, uh, you can't always hear a siren if it's uh, you know it's far away from you in the county um, because uh, especially at nighttime. Uh, you can't always hear it if your windows are closed at night. So don't wait to depend on a siren. The best thing to do is to have a National Weather Service radar where you can actually uh, radio that you can program your specific county in there and it will only alert you for your county or if you program counties next door to you and it will alert you when the storm could be coming into your area. Of course, the 11 Alive app that we have as well, if you download that and then you allow uh, notification alerts, you have to be able to say yes to notification alerts. It will also alert you when there is a uh, warning in your area, too. So there are multiple ways that you can get warnings. Don't depend on the siren because those aren't as effective these days with our thick windows, weatherproof windows and stuff that we have right now. A lot of people don't hear the siren, so don't necessarily depend on
depend on that coming through. Chris, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the yes. conditions right now. Over your shoulder, it's pretty dreary. You can see it's pretty dreary uh, outside the windows here in Midtown Atlanta. And 15 minutes ago, you were talking about how it was sunny, and that mm. isn't necessarily a very good thing. Yeah, we've had numerous reports that in this lull that we're having here in Atlanta, uh, and also over parts of North Georgia, the sun is starting to break through those clouds. And as the sun breaks through those clouds, it adds to some heating. We need stable air. We don't have stable air. It is unstable. And any additional heating with any additional sunshine will add even more instability as this next line of showers and storms moves our way. Now, this is just kind of a rogue storm. I don't really call it a rogue storm, but a storm ahead of this main line that's still developing back here along I-65 between Huntsville and Birmingham. That's still the main line that's going to come through tonight. This isn't. Uh, this is just the beginning of round three. This isn't all of round three. This is just the beginning of that that's coming into West Georgia right now. Uh, so we still have that tornado warning in effect for areas of Cleburne County in Alabama. You can see the storm moving through there. Uh, if there's any good news that we're talking about here, you know what? Let me go to velocity. I just am seeing something right here that I want to. OK, so as this gets closer to the radar site, uh, it, I do think this does look a little more impressive now. This rotation that I'm seeing south of I-20 in Cleburne County, this is right at the Georgia and Alabama border. That actually still looks pretty impressive here. Uh, right north of Ranburn, here's Bowden right here. Let me come back out one step here. There's Bowden. And this is actually starting to look a little bit more impressive now. As it's getting closer to the radar site, we could just be getting a little better uh, information from the returns that are coming in. So it may be interesting. Uh, let me see if the National Weather Service is, um, they often will update that to give us any um, tornado warning. There we go. It just came in right there. There's the red box. There you see it right here. Let me come back out just a little bit. This red polygon right here. All right. So just as I was telling you, I was anticipating that they might issue a new warning. Here it is just issued. I was concerned about this rotation beginning to ramp up just a little bit more. They have just real noticed that as well from the National Weather Service, and they have now just issued this warning. So all of us together, you and I uh, and the National Weather Service watching this together, Notice this rotation that's ramping up a little bit more. So they have now upgraded a severe thunderstorm warning for Carroll County now to a tornado warning for folks in Carroll County. Let me put this up, that up for you uh, so you can see the exact uh, timeline of that. Carroll County until 615. That's when we have this new tornado warning in effect for Carroll County until 615 tonight. Here again is a look at the rotation. OK, so it's just now crossing this last scan. Uh, just change the location of that a little bit. I want to get OK, so this does look more impressive right here. Uh, looks like uh, some really tight rotation now looking even more impressive when you see the reds and the greens. And this looks like a good hook that we have going on right now between Ranbird and Bowden moving closer to Mount Zion. I want everyone in Carroll County right now get into your tornado safe position. That is the lowest floor of your home, the centermost part of your house. You want to put as many walls between you and the outside as possible as you want to protect yourself from this system that is moving in. We have some rotation that we are seeing here on velocity. Let me see if we can even get down to some street level mapping here. This is Burwell. Here's Garrett Circle, Burwell, Mount Zion Road. There's Mount Zion right there. You are in the path of this circulation and rotation as it moves in. Lowest floor of your home, centermost part of your house. In the part of your plan that you have here for taking cover, I want you to have that plan of, of knowing where you're going to go. But also when you get there, make sure you have shoes. Uh, you might want to have a helmet uh, to protect you from anything that might fall on your head. The reason you want to have shoes there is if there is damage and you have to crawl out from your safe place and there's wood and nails, you don't want to be stepping on that barefooted. So have some shoes on or shoes with you when you go down to your safe place as well. I'll come back out just a little bit. Uh, this is I-20, all right? Uh, so, of course, Atlanta's way back over here. I'll, I'll widen out to give you perspective here. But this is I-20, Highway 27 that goes from Carrollton uh, right there at Mount Zion. There's the exit right there at I-20 and uh, Highway 27. This circulation is looking more and more impressive uh, as it moves through. Let me actually look at the... Um, 
warning information that has just come in from Carroll County just to see if I can glean any new information from them as what they are also seeing with it. Uh, capable of producing a tornado located over Ranburn, Alabama. That's what right where we were talking about. There's Ranburn right there. Uh, that is 14 miles southeast of Heflin which is right where we're talking about moving east at 35 miles an hour. This rotation looking impressive there. Uh, it is radar indicated rotation. We do not have a visual confirmation of this right now, but it is radar indicated from what we're seeing. This looks impressive to me uh, with that rotation, even this far away from the radar site. I'll come back out. I want you to have perspective of where this is compared to where we are. Here's Atlanta right here. This is the storm crossing over the line right at I-20, just south of I-20 in Carroll County, not too far off from Carrollton. Remember on Monday, we had video of that roof that was being blown off of the fire station. That was in Carroll County. So Carroll County was already hit on Monday. They're now getting hit again with this storm that has rotation with it, a radar indicated tornado. That's why we have this tornado warning that's gonna be in effect until 615. This is moving over to the east at 35 miles an hour. Let me put a new track on this for you. I'm gonna take this out to 35 miles an hour and this will tell you the areas that are under the gun with this. Burwell at 557, uh, that's the area that's gonna be pushing into, into you, the wind this storm will be moving your way. Carrollton at 609. Right now it's 551. Uh, at uh, 609, that's when we think this rotation is going to be moving into Carrollton. I want everyone in the path of the storm in this uh, black. Uh, polygon here or black time frame that you see here, cone, uh, to, to be prepared for this storm that could potentially move into your area. Douglas County, you are not included in this tornado warning right now, but I would not be surprised if Douglas County is going to be included in this if this rotation holds together, which this is looking very impressive uh, out there right now on the radar screen coming over the line from Alabama into West Georgia uh, with that potential rotation right there moving into Carroll County. Again, going to Cross Plains 619, Winston at 636. That's if that rotation holds together. And if that rotation holds together, it would move into Douglasville at 646. Uh, so that's the area of rotation we're watching. Let me go back to reflectivity here. Uh, and I'll, let me take off the lightning. The lightning data is still very impressive, but I want to take it off just momentarily. Oftentimes that covers up sometimes what we're looking for. I want to go back in here and it's this part right here crossing over into uh, Carrollton. This is just right at Bowden, getting closer to the Carrollton area. I also want to put on the uh, hail because the hail has been very, yeah, still uh, very uh, large hail with this. I mean, get another size of this right now uh, where you see those purple colors there, the darker purples. We're talking about uh, over two inches in diameter hail size uh, with this storm that's moving over the line into Carroll County right now. Again, that is enough to do damage and it's moving right along I-20 right here, just to the south of I-20, but some of that hail is falling on some of the cars along I-20. Uh, if our control room uh, and our, some of our producers, maybe I'm not sure how far out what the farthest camera is out in West Georgia on I-20. It would be interesting to see that if we can see some of that hail or to see if cars are pulling over or taking cover. I'm not sure if we have any cameras as far out as Carroll County or not there at the Alabama line, but that would be something that would be interesting to see if you, could, if you guys could check that out for us here. So back to reflectivity and you see all the lightning. I want to get another look at the lightning counter and um, this is uh, how the lightning is, is looking. Uh, 388 lightning strikes just now in the past 15 minutes. I want to take you out to Carroll County right now. Joe Hinkie has been in Carroll County all day long today covering the first wave of storms that came in. Joe, uh, tell me what you're seeing right now as this storm system is moving into your area. Well, Chris, right now we are just north of Villa Rica, which puts us just north of I-20, uh, which, as you were describing, is the path of this storm as it's moving across the Alabama line and into Carroll County. Right now, as you can see behind me, we're, we're not seeing a whole lot. It should be just off in the distance, that storm. Uh, one thing that we were seeing earlier today, though, was a little bit of sun come out. It warmed up for a little bit, uh, which, as I heard you saying uh, earlier in the newscast here, could uh, make for some instability. Um, so hopefully... 
this doesn't uh, that that wasn't foreshadowing this month's ability, but that's what we're seeing right now. We're just waiting for the storm to roll in. Right now we're in a safe spot here in a public parking lot, so we'll keep a live picture up for you as long as we can. If it gets a little bit too dangerous, we'll head inside, um, but we'll keep an eye on it out here for you right now, Chris. Joe, can you hear me? I want you to hang with me just a second. I want to ask you some questions because you are there covering the storm. I also want to make sure that you remain safe. Give me your exact location. You said Villa Rica, just north of I-20. Is that right? Yep, just uh, just north of Villa Rica itself. Right now we're in a Publix uh, parking lot. Um, we were probably about uh, two miles or so uh, from a turn uh, that, that would have put us right on I-20 or almost on I-20. Okay. So you're in this area right here. I don't know if we can come back up on the screen. I want to point out to everybody where uh, Joe is right now, right here at Villa Rica. If you can come back to the touch screen here so we can see uh, where he is. He's in Villa Rica. And, and Joe, this, and uh, we can put him back on there too. We, we, this is where you are in Villa Rica, right there at I-20. And the storm is right over here, just south of I-20. I want you to be safe. Keep looking toward the west uh, as these storms move in. In fact, if you can come back to us here, uh, your camera, I'm not sure who your photographer is. Uh, are you looking, are we able to see uh, back toward the west to see those storm clouds that are developing there and some of that lightning? I'm not sure if you can show us that or not. Did we lose him? There we go. For you right now, um, we, we, haven't, we haven't seen any lightning uh, out here ourselves right now. It's been uh, rather calm where we're at. Um, we sort of stopped here uh, to, to wait for this storm to get closer to us. We didn't want to get on I-20 and be heading into that uh, head, head first on the highway there. Okay, so again, I want you guys to be safe. Uh, be careful out there because this storm is moving your way. Not only does it have some circulation with that, potential rotation, maybe a tornado with it, but it also has intense lightning and very large hail uh, with this storm as well. So please be careful uh, out there as you are tracking this storm. Make sure that you have a safe place to go as I'm advising everyone in Carroll County uh, in the path of this storm uh, to take cover. So your safety is most important and I wanna make sure you understand what's moving your way. In fact, if you can see this, let me show you the hail uh, that is pushing in right now. And this is a very intense hail core coming in right there, Joe, uh, where you see that hail that's about two inches in diameter between Bowden and I-20. That's in far western Carroll County. You're right up here in Villa Rica, just north of I-20. So this trajectory would be bringing this hail closer to you and also that potential rotation closest to you too. So you guys look toward the west. Uh, keep an eye on that. Be at a place where you can take cover uh, when you see the conditions deteriorating, not only from the hail, but also from the potential rotation that's coming your way. So stand by. Make sure you're in a safe place. We're going to come back to you if we can safely come back to you in just a few minutes. All right, Joe? Perfect. Sounds good. We got a safe place right behind the camera here, so we'll keep this picture up. And also, thankfully, uh, other people, it sounds like they're listening to the weather report. Other people have pulled off on the side of the road here. So looks like uh, quite a few people are playing it safe and staying off that highway in the, in the trajectory of that uh, weather pattern. And some of this hail size we're talking is about two inches in diameter, actually two to three inches in diameter. That would be ping pong ball size hail, golf ball size hail. And that can do damage to roofs. It can do damage to homes out there, too. So if you don't mind, while you're standing by, point your camera toward the west and we're going to keep coming back and kind of taking a look at that uh, to keep an eye on the deteriorating conditions as they move your way. But again, first and foremost, I want you guys to be safe out there. So Joe, we're going to check back in with you. We'll look at your live picture coming back up in just a few minutes when our, um, and our producers see that coming up and we'll, we'll show that from the west in just a little bit. So again, this is the tornado warning that we Perfect. have right now in Carroll County. It is, uh, the circulation is just to the north of Bowden. I want to go back to the velocity mode. Folks, this doesn't look uh, look good. Um, uh, this looks like a really tight circulation right now between Mount Zion and also Bowden. All right, let me go in tighter to get some street levels. This right here is where we would have that circulation. This is Garrett Circle. Burwell, Burwell, Mount Zion Road. There is Mount Zion. There is Jake, Georgia over in Carroll County. Again, all of this is just to the south of I-20. Farmers High right here. And then Carrollton is right here. Let me come out just a little bit. Okay. I want you to see where this is in relation to Carrollton. And this is bearing down on Carrollton. I want everyone 
in Carroll County in the path of this storm. Take cover now. Go to the lowest floor of your home. I want you to uh, uh, go to the centermost part of your house. Put as many walls between you and the outside as possible and take cover right now. Take our 11 Alive News app with you and you can continue to watch our coverage on our 11 Alive News app if you're away from the TV screen while you're taking cover because this is the cell that's moving through. Uh, Carroll County, Carrollton was already rocked with a tornado on Monday. Now this one's coming in into a similar path, not far off from the University of West Georgia. Here's Carrollton right here, Highway 27. There is the circulation just to the west of Highway 27 that's moving through Carroll County right now. This continues to move over Stay to tuned. the east and it's pushing east and northeast at about 35 miles an hour. Uh, let me check while you're looking at that. I want to see if we have a new uh, weather Let's update uh, uh, from this. If there's anything new coming in, I don't have an update coming in. Well, so we're right at the top of the hour right now. If you are just joining us for 11 Alive News at 6 o'clock, uh, we are beginning continuing our storm coverage of a tornado warning in effect right now for our uh, viewers that are over in West Georgia in Carroll County. This circulation that you see right now, we're looking at our velocity mode every time we get a new scan. This is actually looking uh, looking worse. I don't know if I call this more impressive to a meteorologist. This is right. an impressive look at a hook or a uh, potential tornado, but uh, it's not it's not something that you want to celebrate here because this is uh, some circulation that we're seeing indicated by Doppler radar between Mount Zion and Bowden. This is Carrollton right here. You are in the line of this storm that's going to be moving into Carrollton. Take cover there in Carroll County right now where we have this tornado warning that's going to be in effect until 615. And if this uh, circulation holds together, it would then move over into Douglas County. But Douglas County is not in the warning yet, but I want you folks in Douglas County to be aware of what we're watching. Now, if you're just joining us, let me just widen out, put it back to reflectivity. I want to give you perspective of the area that we're watching because you may be watching us in Atlanta right now thinking there aren't any storms around. Why are they on live? We are in the lull between the next round of storms that is developing and that'll be impacting us as we go through the evening into the evening area here. Let, let me take a, a live look at our DOT traffic cam as we're looking at this storm that's causing a potential tornado there along I-20. Uh, we can take a look at our traffic cam that is on I-20 right at the state line, and you can maybe see some of the conditions there uh, that they'll be able to pop up right here. Uh, this is our um, this is our tower cam. Are we okay? We can see both of those boxes right there. Um, where we see see those those tower cams there, uh, the DOT camera, and also we have a reporter that's in Carroll County right now near the Villa Rica area uh, that we're making sure that they're staying safe with that too. So you can see the deteriorating conditions that we have there at the bottom right hand side of your screen. That is at I-20 at the state line right now. And then the one up here to the, uh, the top right is our uh, uh, photographer and reporter uh, out there in uh, Douglas and uh, Carroll County, right? The Douglas County line along I-20 also pointing to the west. So we can see that cell that is right here. Again, Atlanta, you are not in this warning, but our neighbors over in West Georgia, you are in that warning there in Carroll County. This again is a look at the rain in association with it and all of the lightning with it too. Let's get another look at our lightning counter. Earlier we had just under 400 lightning strikes in the past 15 minutes. Now this is up to 672 lightning strikes in the past 15 minutes here. So this has increased our number of lightning strikes. The storm is increasing now in intensity and we have seen that rotation that looks like it is getting tighter and it is increasing and it's looking more like a potential tornado could be with that. This is radar indicated. We do not have a confirmation of an actual touchdown, but from what I'm seeing on our velocity mode, this does look like some pretty strong rotation with this over in Carroll County right along I-20. Not only has the heavy rain, intense lightning with it, but also uh, some large hail with this too. We can show you our hail uh, with this right now. And uh, all of the dark blues that you see right there, that is where we have hail that is around two inches or more in diameter. We can do a, a, a measure of this right now with and our Chris, hail size. And this will show you what we're seeing about one and a half uh, inches in diameter, possibly up to two inches in diameter there right along I-20. Somebody had a question that I hear? you right now. I'm using okay. the 11 Alive uh, app here and I'm following the radar. And uh, as you're talking about Villarica, you're talking about Douglasville, 
you're talking about Carrollton as well. So if I'm living in East Point or if I'm living in uh, Fayetteville and I'm seeing what's happening to the west of me, uh, if they have the 11 Alive app, they can actually see the storm headed their way. What's the timeline here? Uh, before it actually strikes Metro Atlanta. Okay, so this is moving. This part of the circulation right here is moving to the east at 35 miles an hour. Let me put a track on that for you right here, and you can see exactly what we're watching as it goes through right here uh, through the Carrollton area, moving to the east at 35 miles an hour. That is going to take that cell, if it holds together with that circulation, into Carrollton at 614, Shady Grove at 620, Fair play, that's over in Douglas County uh, at 635, Douglasville at 633, and then Fairburn, that's getting closer to these areas. That's South Fulton County right here. So you're talking about East Point in the Fairburn area. That would be moving into there, most likely closer to the 7 o'clock time frame at the top of the hour is when, if this circulation holds together, it would be pushing into those areas of South Fulton County after it goes through Douglas County, maybe over to South Fulton here, into the Fairburn area. Uh, but between 6.50 and 7 o'clock tonight, or just after 7 o'clock, is when it would be moving into those areas. Here is Atlanta right here. So if that storm holds together here uh, into Atlanta, uh, it would be after that, between 7 and 7.30, when we would see the impacts around Atlanta or for areas to the south. Again, that's if that circulation holds together. We often see with these storms uh, tightening of circulation and then loosening up, and we experienced that happening when it was over in Cleburne County, Alabama. We had a tornado warning there. We saw that rotation loosen up a little bit. It didn't look as impressive, so they issued the severe thunderstorm warning here. And then, as it was crossing the line, remember how we were looking at that, and right. I said, hey, this looks like it's tightening up a little bit more. And just soon after that, the National Weather Service then did issue a tornado warning for Carroll County as we saw that rotation uh, tightening up. So let me Can go I back to velocity. That, and yes, go ahead. I, I'm curious about the science behind that. What is causing that rotation to loosen or to strengthen and tighten? You know, it just takes with storms, uh, they, they kind of cycle, and that's just the evolution of storms that take place here. Sometimes they'll, uh, they'll it's really hard to keep a, a storm holding together at, a, at a, a big strength for a long time, except for sometimes when you have supercell storms and you can see an F4 or F5 travel for miles and miles. Usually with these type of storms that we have here, they'll tighten up and loosen. It's just the evolution of storms. It really takes a lot of energy to keep them really tight and to keep them really strong. And if they don't have that energy, it'll loosen up a little bit more and then tighten up again when it's able to kind of recover and get that energy back. But look at this. Samantha Moore just has joined us here in the uh, Storm Tracker Center. And uh, this is a very impressive, well, we would call impressive look at this. This is really not something you want to celebrate, though. But this circulation uh, looks very uh, intriguing here as we've got this storm that's in Carroll County just over to the west of Carrollton. This is closing in on Carrollton right now, uh, this circulation right here. So Again, we've got State Route 166, Northside Drive. Here's the city of Carrollton. There's Shady Grove, uh, Tyrus Carrollton Road, Farmers High, Burwell. It has already moved through that area, and now it is closing in on Carrollton, even as we speak, with the circulation that is moving through. We have Joe Hinky that is uh, live in Carroll County. They are making sure that they are staying, staying safe. We are monitoring his live camera right now as it is pointed to the west. We're going to see deteriorating conditions there. But Sam, I just want to get your perspective on this right now as you take a look at this velocity uh, that we see here with the storm that's uh, bearing down on Carroll County right now. It is, it is an impressive looking signature like you were talking about, Chris. There's the latest sweep that went by here and you can see the red moving away from the radar site, the green moving towards it. And when you see that abrupt line here, that's of course where we're seeing uh, that rotation occur. And it is a very large area here, as Chris was saying, uh, centered right in here on approach, here is the area of rotation that we're most concerned about moving uh, towards Carrollton. And I just came in from being out in the field. And Chris, you said this was moving at what speed to the Going east? at 35 miles an hour to the east, uh, pretty much to the east, 35 miles an hour. 35 miles per so hour I'll, I'll to track the it for east. You. So that's going to put it into these communities. Chris is going to put a track on that here. But uh, yes, if you are watching anywhere in the Carrollton area, 
uh, you need to go ahead and take cover, especially here within the next seven minutes in Cross Plains. Now's the time to take cover in the lowest level of your home, interior space away from any windows. Fair play, it's going to be about 630 when it gets into your area if it maintains its circulation. Chattahoochee Hills, 639. Palmetto, 649 if it maintains this uh, intensity and its organization and then uh, potentially into Union City after 7 o'clock if it lasts that long. But right now we're most concerned about the folks here in Carrollton. And look at the lightning associated with the this uh, tornado. I mean, uh, th this is really something. 631 strikes. That's in the past 15, 15 minutes alone. So uh, the atmosphere literally full of energy here, and it's being released in the form of uh, this lightning. I can't imagine how loud it is just with the thunder itself, let alone with these uh, dangerous winds that this is likely producing. Uh, Chris is uh, slicing the storm in half, showing how far up in the atmosphere this extends, up around 40 thousand feet. So a lot of times you're flying in an airplane, you're flying uh, at or below this level, the jet stream level, and we have a lot of divergence aloft here in this level. And what that does is you get divergence aloft, it allows a lot of lift here in the atmosphere. So this is a very well-developed system and uh, with a tornado warning on it right now, moving to the east at uh, 30 miles per, uh, 35 miles per hour. So uh, all the folks here in Carrollton, this is uh, the time where hopefully you're already in your safe place, fair play, it's headed in your direction. Uh, this gives you some perspective if you're here in the metro, because outside it's pretty nice right now in the Atlanta area. It's just when you head out I-20 that we have this tornado warning that is in place and it is moving to the east, right, uh, just right to the south here of I-20. So anyone who lives here, uh, Douglasville, Villa Rica, this is your uh, wake-up call that says this is headed in your direction. And it's time now to uh, get the kids together, uh, get the pets together, take all those precautions you need to do. If you have a helmet laying around, a batting helmet, a ski helmet, a bicycle helmet, uh, you may want to go ahead and stick it on the kids, stick it on yourself and uh, make sure you have some shoes nearby as well because if you do get hit, you're gonna have to walk through some debris and that could be really dangerous. So it's good to have some sort of footwear and some sort of uh, protection for your head if things do start to fly around the area. So Chris, uh, I know you wanna show us some other aspects of the cell that's moving right now at a pretty good clip. It really is uh, over in Carrollton still, bearing down on Carroll, and, and on the city of Carrollton there in Carroll County. Uh, this is the storm. Now I just checked from the National Weather Service and uh, they are saying, let me go to velocity. Here's live mode, uh, back to the velocity mode. And we're seeing, it still looks pretty impressive here, but the National Weather Service says they're detecting just some slight variations in that rotation that it could be weakening only a little bit. Uh, so that's what we're gonna continue to watch if we see that trend continuing to take place with any additional weakening uh, that could be happening out there. But this still, the rotation still looks impressive to me on this right at Carrollton. And this is now about to move into Douglas County. This is fair play, okay? So the uh, warning, just looked like it uh, disappeared. This was supposed to expire at 615 and it's now just at 612. Uh, so we're looking to see now our clock is showing 615 here. So uh, we'll wait and see if the computer just uh, made that disappear or if we're actually gonna see an, an additional warning that's gonna come out out of this uh, that could potentially include Douglas County uh, with the storms here. Again, that's the potential rotation right over Carrollton. We're waiting to see if the National Weather Service is going to extend this warning over into Douglas County, potentially into South Fulton County. That is the next thing that we are waiting for right now uh, to see if this is gonna hold together or if maybe they will issue a severe thunderstorm warning with this too, as the main threats that we have here uh, the potential for rotation. We're seeing the hail size weaken or go down just a little bit. Remember when this was over into Alabama, we had hail between three and a half and four inches in diameter. As it was over uh, the Carroll County area on the west side, we saw around two inch diameter hail. Now that is shrinking up just a little bit and that is a good sign. Again, as Melissa was asking, part of the cycling of a storm 
where we see maybe this kind of ramping down just a little bit. The circulation not quite as tight. The hail not as large as it was. We can look at this hail size right here and see that this dark blue area just to the west of Carrollton is showing that hail size right at about just a little over an inch in diameter. Still big, but just not as large as it was just a little while ago. And then back to the reflectivity and all of the lightning still in association with that heavy rain uh, through Harrelson County there. It's passing through Bremen. You're on the back side of this right now in Bremen going down to Carroll County up toward Villa Rica and now extending up into the southern parts of Paulding County near Dallas where we have some of that heavier rain coming through. Okay, we just had a good new scan come in. So I want to go back to Carrollton and check out velocity one more time. Still looking impressive there over Carroll County. So the, the, the time frame that's going to be interesting is between now and really the next few minutes uh, to see if there is, um, uh, let's see here. More shear. I'm looking to see if they're going to extend that over. They haven't yet. And in fact, uh, MIC Keith Stallman at the National Weather Service in Peachtree City saying that it's more stable once it crosses right over the border into Georgia. It's cooler. The air is more stable. So as it encounters that more stable air mass, uh, it's uh, starting to they're starting to weaken a little bit. So that area of the most instability is right at that intersection of the warm and the cold. OK, and so that's going to be the thing that we're going to watch for um, the, the warning expiring at 615 now for Carroll County. Uh, the, the big question. OK, so this scan is showing that kind of differentiation here between uh, the, 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 the winds blowing toward us and the winds blowing away from us. We're not seeing as distinct of a rotation with that right now. Uh, let me come back out just a little bit. One more step here. Uh, still a little convergence there of the winds and some of the uh, rain and hydrometeors in the sky, but it doesn't look as impressive as it did earlier, but we could still see uh, some of that rotation there uh, with this system. But as of right now, that warning has expired, but I want to hold with you for just a second to see if they are going to reissue this to potentially include Douglas County and also into South Fulton County. Sam is monitoring uh, that right now. In fact, Sam, if you want to ask them, it, they might would reply to you very quickly okay. instead of Chris, us kind of waiting. Yes. Chris and Sam, just want to ask you guys this real quick. For folks who are visiting this area, maybe new to this area, they see the light show out their window and you're telling them to get away from the window, to wear a helmet if they uh, possibly wear a helmet if they, if they need to. Is it the projectiles that you're concerned about or, or, or the damage? Well, if you're in a tornado warning and you're taking cover uh, and you're in your safe place, if you happen to be in that path, even though you're in your safe place in the lowest floor of your house or the centermost part of your house, still, if you're, let's say you're in a closet in the uh, inner part of your, your downstairs uh, and you can be taking cover there, and if things start, if your house starts to fall in, uh, you want to protect your head with a helmet there. So that's just kind of a way to, to help you, uh, another step to help to protect yourself. We hope in your safe place you would be safe and the tornado wouldn't impact you there. But just in case uh, the walls start falling in or debris starts falling around, you want to protect yourself any way you can just by grabbing that bicycle helmet or motorcycle helmet or a baseball helmet, softball helmet, or any kind of sporting helmet there uh, could help to protect yourself. Yourself. Any additional layers that you can use to protect your body is highly recommended, and it's basically from any falling walls or falling, uh, you know, lumber or trees or anything like that that could impact you. Uh, and that's why you want to why you want to do that to protect yourself. And as Samantha. Sam mentioned, oh. uh, you want to have shoes with you as well in your safe place because let's say that. The storm passes over, you crawl out of your safe place and you find out that the top floor of your home has been blown off and you're out walking around. You don't want to be walking around barefooted into that because you'll be stepping on wood, debris, nails or anything like that. So did you have something, Melissa? I did. Uh, Samantha, a moment ago, was talking about the cooler, more stable air just over the Georgia border. What I'm curious about, though, the weather obviously from Alabama is moving into Georgia. So that warmer air from Georgia will move into our state and could possibly add a little bit of energy or fuel or so do I not understand properly? We have a warm front that's lifting in from the south and as that warm front comes in uh, ahead of the cold front that's out to the west, that is what we call the warm sector. We actually could see our temperatures warming up tonight. So far, we have only been in the 60s. In fact, let me put up the temperatures right now. I want to get a, a look at those. We had temperatures that only made it into the 60s uh, this afternoon, but we could actually warm up a little bit tonight as that warm front comes into our area and we get into that warm sector 
sector. You can kind of see these colors here of the green showing the cooler air. Right now we're at 66 in Atlanta, 65 in Duluth. Look at Gainesville at 59. We've got 57 in Clayton. But here's that warmer air out into Alabama, 74 right now in LaGrange, 67 in Peachtree City, 67 in Carrollton. So as this warm front comes up to the north, and that warm sector moves into our area, we may actually see our temperatures warm up a little bit more tonight as that next round of rain and storms moves in. So that'll add some more fuel to the fire. So uh, and you asked me earlier about that tornado warning where they're going to extend that to the east. Sorry to interrupt, Chris. No, but I'm, that we need that info. Significant weather advisory now for a North Fulton, Douglas, Southwest Cobb, Southeastern Harrelson, Eastern Carroll, Southern Paulding and South Fulton until 645. So not a warning, but still they're urging people to uh, seek shelter immediately because their winds 40 to 50 miles per hour uh, still have an enhanced risk for a brief tornado. Small hail also possible. So although uh, there is no tornado warning, still the conditions are not safe. And we're seeing that that lightning count is diminishing somewhat. I'm going to show you that lightning count one more time, go into live mode. And earlier we had some impressive uh, lightning counts with this and you can see here let's go into live mode right there and here's the lightning count where you see over there I think this is going to be a lot lower than what we were showing earlier yeah now 186 lightning strikes in the past 15 minutes and again the hail size with this is also a little bit smaller so not as large so that all of these things coming together to show us that this storm is weakening somewhat. So it looks like they are not going to extend the tornado warning into Douglas County and South Fulton, but we are going to keep a close eye on that. And if they do extend that and potentially have uh, more storms that are going to be moving our way, which we do think will be materializing back into Alabama, uh, we will uh, continue to have more coverage here for you as well. Stay with us. Uh, we're going to take a quick break and then we will show you some more news of the day that's been occurring uh, as we continue to track these storms that are weakening, getting closer to the Atlanta. We've got more to come with the 11 Alive Storm Trackers. I grew up here and I've seen Metro Atlanta's economy grow, but our potential is unlimited. We have great colleges training our young people, but too many leave after they graduate. We still don't have enough of the jobs they're looking for. In Congress, I'll work with anyone to cut wasteful spending, increase our exports, and expand high-tech, biotech, and medical research. That's how we take our economy to the next level. I'm John Ossoff, and I approve this message. Liberal extremists will stop at nothing to push their radical agenda. Now they're turning their attention to Georgia and demanding that you vote for John Ossoff for Congress. John Ossoff is one of them. Ossoff will vote with Nancy Pelosi for more spending, bigger government, and a weaker military. Don't let them hijack our congressional seat. Stop Ossoff now. Congressional Leadership Fund is responsible for the content of this advertising. You sent me to Washington as an outsider to help fix a broken system. With a new president who isn't afraid to shake things up, we finally have a real chance. Trust me, we don't need another career politician up here. Dan Moody cares more about getting results than getting credit. That's so uncommon and exactly what we need. Dan's one of us. I'm Dan Moody, and I approve this message. Lots of campaign promises, but who's gotten results? As chair of the Fulton County Board of Commissioners, Karen Handel turned a $100 million deficit into a balanced budget without raising taxes. As local Chamber of Commerce president, Handel helped create tens of thousands of jobs. And in Congress, she'll fight to lower taxes. In this race, there's only one proven conservative who will fight for Georgia. Vote Karen Handel for Congress. Ending Spending Inc. is responsible for the content of this advertising. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers. Again, I want to sum up what we're watching here. We had a tornado warning in Carroll County that expired at 615. The storm system is weakening as it moves on over to the east. Uh, it's still going to bring in some uh, very heavy rain, hail possible, and intense lightning here as it pushes into Douglas County. Uh, you can see the storm now as it's moving along I-20. It is weakening some, but still some very heavy rain and hail, smaller hail as it moves into Douglas County. Atlanta would be next as we're going to see this uh, heavy rain that's going to be moving into 
into our area. More storms developing here back in Alabama. This is part of that round three we're talking about. This still is going to be moving into our area tonight. There is a tornado watch that has been extended to include Atlanta. It's going to be in effect until 10 o'clock tonight. Here's the timeline of what I'm going to walk you through here as these storms move through that line going through West Georgia. This is at nine o'clock going through the Atlanta area between 9 and 11 o'clock. And then after we get to midnight, all of these storms are going to be out of here and then we'll have a windy, colder day here tomorrow. We're going to keep tracking these storms for you and we'll break in with more information if more warnings are issued. All right, thank you very much. Uh, extensive, beautiful yes, coverage from absolutely. Chief Meteorologist Chris Holcomb and Samantha Moore, who not only reported from the field, but reported here yeah, from the studio. In a very fluid situation. Absolutely. They're going to stay with us, bring you any uh, critical updates. We also wanted to share with you some new video that's just in of a possible tornado in Weston that is in Georgia. Yeah, that's right. That's about two, about two hours south of Atlanta. This is right in between Columbus and Albany. The possible tornado damage, numerous structures, as you can see, and completely destroyed a mobile home. It tore the roof off of a house, many trees down, blocking roadways, lots of debris all over the place. One man says it was too close for comfort. Anytime something like that happens, we all gather here at the home house. All of us that are in mobile homes, we try and get out and come down here to the uh, home house. So when we gathered down here, it was really bad because the top on the home house started uh, peeling off. So we knew it was a very serious storm. Very situation there. By the way, once again, this is not a confirmed tornado until the National Weather Service gets out there to survey it. So all that heavy rain today causing pounding on Interstate 75 and several other roads in Cobb County. Ryan Kruger joins us live there. Ryan, what can you tell us? Yeah, Ron, definitely had some hairy moments earlier today. The good news is, is uh, from 5 o'clock, I've really noticed the roads have dried considerably, uh, so not nearly as much uh, slick sliding as you're seeing on the roads right now. Let's go ahead and show you some video that we took earlier today on I-75 southbound. So this is going to be I-75 southbound right near the perimeter, right in the heart of Cobb County, and you can see it was really coming down pretty Few, pretty tense moments uh, on the interstate earlier today. Uh, cars were driving, ponding on the roadway, uh, shooting that water up into the air. GDOT crews did arrive. Thankfully, they were able to, believe it or not, actually use shovels to try to get some of that water off of the roads. They successfully did that. Traffic on I-75 southbound picked up. It was quickly moving. I can also tell you that we were also getting reports earlier today of roads that were closed in Cherokee County. Uh, you know, but when we talk about flash flooding, this is what we're talking about. Uh, the roads were quickly flooded, and then within about an hour, the water receded. Thankfully, everyone was able to go through again. Uh, so yes, we have had uh, some slip sliding here in, in Cobb County and in Cherokee County, uh, but the good news is, is at least for right now, it appears that it's uh, everyone is easy going for now. Back to you in the studio. All right, Ryan, thanks a lot for the update there, sir. Now, the new line of storms moving into the area. Your pictures, your video have been giving us a closer look at the damage. Matt Pearl has some of the more compelling images. Matt? Yeah, guys, quite a bit of stuff coming in in the last half hour. We've been talking so much about Carrollton and the area in West Georgia. Here are some of the photos that our storm trackers have sent just again in the last half hour. This coming from Carol Carmichael at around 6, showing the wind coming in. And then at 6.06, Blake Robb Facebooking out, I think I'm hearing hail. What does that hail look like? Here is a photo from Nicolette LaRue Agan in Bowden, Georgia, showing the size of the hail that fell. This was posted on our Facebook Storm Trackers group at about 616. Six minutes later, she post posted this photo saying from a friend in Bowden, not sure if, what's, if this is what it truly looks like, but this is the photo that she received. So again, you're seeing what we're seeing here in Bowden, Georgia, the size of the hail and just the sight of that storm coming in. Bowden, of course, west of Carrollton by about, uh, about a dozen miles or so. Take a look again. Here's Carrollton, and then we head over west to see where the storm is coming from. Guys, back to you. Thanks a lot. Uh, you know, we really appreciate our storm trackers out there giving us. And of course, that size of hail that they uh, that he was talking about in those pictures corresponded with the hail size that mm -hmm. we were showing on radar. So again, we're watching this cell that's weakening as it approaches the Atlanta area. But we have more storms back here into Alabama. We're saying where we have that tornado watch that's been extended into Atlanta. These storms are going to be developing here tonight. Moving through, those storms have the potential to produce some severe weather. Sam and I are going to be here continuing to watch this. We're going to have more coverage on our stream. But for now, uh, on 11alive.com and on Facebook, now 
now we're going to take you to nightly news. If any additional warnings are issued, though, we will break into coverage and let you know to keep you and your family safe. And you, is, are you sharing that to Facebook as well? Yeah, yeah. And will you share it from my page? Yeah, I will. Am I on now, the stream? <laughs> I never know when I'm on the stream. I hear your audio. I can so hear myself. Thank you. Yeah, he's Thank amazing. you. Yeah. Oh, no, everybody. Great hustle for you. Oh, my God. I don't know how much help I was, though. Oh, no, she was great help. Oh, I was able to... Thank you. It's a hard balance. Mm -hmm. Hey, Chris is Mike, testing one, two, three. Look at, this is like, I almost cried. I did, I, my eyes watered when I read this. Um, do you remember Johnny Beckman? Yes. <gasps> He's my weather idol that I worked with it for a few years. I don't know why that's. Sexy. Mm -hmm. What? They want me to stream online. Yeah, I'm not sure how we do that. Just let me know when I'm on. I wonder if I took a picture of it with the ringer. Oh, maybe you did. Let's see, let me go back. Sorry. Yeah, that's what you did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shoot, I thought I sent that out. Hold on, let me do it But again. it's on your page, right? Yeah, but anyway, that's like the highest Aww. compliment to come from my weather idol, so, so cool. it was really cool. I don't, I my eyes watered. Day. I don't blame you. Hey, are we up? We're on the stream right now? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Oh, we have a lot more fun on the stream, don't we? Yeah. Are we up? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, touch screen. <clears throat>
No, hold on. Oh. Hey everybody, I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb. We're gonna be streaming live and I'm gonna to try to, to let y'all see what we're doing streaming at the same time on this Facebook Live. So um, it's gonna be a little different from what I normally do, but I'll try to answer some of your questions. So we're getting ready to go right now. I'm ready, Tyrone. Good evening, everyone. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers, and we continue our live team coverage. I know we're seeing this camera here. I hope you guys don't mind seeing this camera. I'm going to have to move this over here. Sorry. Uh, we are online right now, uh, streaming at 11alive.com, and at the same time, we are trying to give you a look at what we are doing here on our Facebook Live as well. So we'll see if this works right there. Let's try that. Uh, so we're doing two things at once here, streaming online at 11alive.com. And I'm also talking to uh, folks that are on uh, joining us now uh, with our Facebook Live. And we're going to try to answer some of your questions uh, on Facebook Live while we're also continuing our coverage here on 11alive.com as the storm system is moving through our area right now. Thank goodness uh, this cell that was over in Carroll County was looking very impressive with a rotation where we had a uh, tornado warning that was in effect there. And now uh, that has weakened greatly. Look at this. The lightning count with this that was over the line into Alabama uh, had hundreds of lightning strikes with that uh, in a 15 minute period. And it's weakened now as it's moved over into uh, Carroll County County and now over into Douglas County, we are seeing fewer lightning strikes here right now. We have a new uh, severe thunderstorm warning that was just issued. Uh, that is right down here for Heard County and also into Coweta County. Brand new severe thunderstorm warning now that is in effect. Uh, this is going to be impacting areas of uh, Coweta, Heard, and Troop County. This will be in effect until 7 o'clock. So a brand new severe thunderstorm warning in effect. It's moving northeast at 45, Sam says. Golf ball size hail can be expected with this system. 60 mile per hour wind gusts, radar indicated. All right, so let's track this coming out of Texas, which is right there at the Georgia-Alabama line. Sam says it's moving northeast at northeast. 45 miles an hour. So we'll put a track on this, bring it out to 45. That's going to take this storm into Franklin just in the next few minutes at 647. Grantville at 706. Noonan at 712. And then Peachtree City at 727. Uh, and then into Fayetteville at 7. 39. Again, Sam said that the warning, the text of that warning mentioned the potential for golf ball size hail. Uh, let me clear this and we can look at that uh, hail with that right here. And it will show most likely right there coming out of Alabama, uh, over the line there into Alabama, mm, coming mm -hmm. into right there at Roanoke, Alabama, that's south of Wadawi, about to move into Texas, which is there in Heard County. Uh, you can see the northern part of Troop County included with that, just to the north of LaGrange near Hogansville. Very large hail in association with that. I can go over here and give you a look at that hail size. This is most likely hail about an inch and a half in diameter, almost two inches in diameter, 1.8 inches in diameter that hail size coming out of Alabama, and that's going to extend over into Coweta County. So this warning uh, for those areas in effect until, uh, was it 715, Sam? I'm sorry, I just totally forgot already. Yeah, until 7, until 7, 7. o'clock, Okay, yes. uh, moving from uh, Alabama again, just north of West Point Lake there near LaGrange, and then moving up to the uh, north and east, as Sam mentioned, at 45 miles an hour. Let me show you, though, this storm uh, come up a little bit closer here to the Atlanta area, and you can see this storm that's moving in to or closer to Atlanta right now, uh, going through uh, Cobb County right here. It looks like the worst of this is in southern Paulding, southern Cobb, right along I-20 in Douglas County. Uh, so our, um, I'm 
not sure if our control room is still able to uh, listen in, if y'all are controlling what we have on our graphics here, but if you guys could put up our ARC-13 camera, uh, that is the camera that we have. Uh, I believe we had it up in Cobb County. If, if not, I'll change that in just a second, but it'll be interesting to see how things are probably looking just kind of rainy in Cobb County. We also have those storms that are in Douglas County right now that are looking intense. Okay, so this is our camera. Yes, this is from Cobb County here at SunTrust Park as we are looking toward the west, and you can see those clouds uh, that are pushing through uh, with that system that look kind of ominous there. They're moving around a good bit, and you can see that differentiation between those clouds and where we have the quieter weather uh, as the storm system is moving a little bit closer to us. And also, I'm not sure if you could put up our tower cam remote 56, how easy that is for you to do really quickly here, because that camera is looking toward the Atlanta area, kind of to the south and west, and we may see a good line of those storms. Uh, again, that is the tower cam out of Atlanta right now of those storms that are pushing into that area too. So for our friends on Facebook who are watching right here on uh, Facebook Live, uh, we've got some questions. Let me see if I can get some of these questions that are coming in right now. If this will let me scroll backwards, and it's not. Is this going to be a Blackberry winter? Uh, we can't see the view. I know y'all are just kind of watching our what we're doing here on, um, on this uh, live stream. Be sure and watch on 11alive.com as well if you want to see the whole thing. I just wanted to see if I could answer some of your questions. Douglas Cleveland says, strange, I get better coverage from you than local making channels. Uh, thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, again, watching these storms as they uh, move through. McKenzie's asking about Cartersville. So I'm not gonna be able to ask every, or answer every specific question about every city or county that is mentioned. Cartersville right now, not seeing much action, but there's more storm coverage that's gonna be coming, storms, the more storms are gonna be coming through tonight. Uh, Natalie Fretwell says, just posted a picture, a video at the 11 Live Storm Trackers page showing flooding from earlier today in downtown Watkinsville. Thank you for that. Brandy Liano, will a severe storm warning uh, affect Locust Grove soon? Uh, there are, the, the warning is more to the south. Uh, it could be impacting uh, Locust Grove a little bit later with that cell that's coming through Coweta County. Uh, Sean is asking for Scythe County good tonight. No, we still have another wave of rain that's going to be moving through. Can we go back to the touchscreen? Um, we have another wave of rain that's going to be moving through tonight that's coming in from Alabama. So uh, multiple waves that we're watching right here. This is the beginning of wave number three, where we have this uh, thunder and lightning coming through Douglas County, approaching Metro Atlanta. But when you go back here to Birmingham and into Alabama, these storms that are developing here are still ahead of the front. That front is not going to pass through our area until we get through the late Later hours tonight, most likely closer to midnight, uh, before we see that front that's going to sweep through our area. So our friends who are watching on Facebook Live, I'm sorry that you're kind of looking at the back of my head, but y'all are just kind of here with us as we are streaming online as well, doing two things at one, streaming and do a Facebook Live, trying to answer some of your question. So you said this one is right at LaGrange until 7, right? My phone froze for a minute. Uh, yes, it's uh, just to the north of LaGrange right now is where we have this uh, warning that's in effect. It includes the northern parts of uh, Troop County mainly including Heard County and also Coweta County. This is going to be in effect until 7 o'clock as we have this uh, area of rain and storminess that uh, continues to move through. Uh, moving to the uh, east at about... Uh, northeast Sam? at 45. Northeast at 45. So that part of the storm right here going through into Cooksville at 655, Grantville at 707, Noonan at 714, Peachtree City at 729, and then into Fayetteville, if that holds together, it would be there around 740. And that's the one that could have golf ball size hail oh. associated with it. This is another look as we're looking back to Alabama. Uh, the tornado watch that's in effect there. These storms that are developing there, these are the storms that come through tonight. We may see another squall line developing tonight. We have the potential for those storms. Now, I know that red box stops there at West Georgia, but actually the tornado watch has been extended or expanded to include uh, the Atlanta area. Uh, this is going to be in effect until 10 o'clock tonight. So as that line of storms comes in tonight, we will have the potential for some tornadoes to develop there, um, moving into our area and continuing on over to the east with that potential storm threat. Once we get to 11 o'clock, or actually the midnight hour, we think that most of these storms are going to be gone and we'll see some improving weather as uh, the conditions will begin to improve going through the nighttime hours tonight. Sam is monitoring our weather chat. Sam, you can come on over here. Uh, I'd like to just get your perspective as we're kind of watching these storms that are coming through right mm -hmm. now. Um, you know, this, um, th we're thankful 
that this uh, really weakened, we were seeing some pretty impressive rotation with that over in Carroll County. And then all of a sudden, as it moved into our state and kind of hit some of that cooler air, right, right. Uh, it's, they started weakening rapidly. We went from hundreds of lightning strikes with that cell south of I-20 in Alabama right. and just started to see that deteriorate. The rotation started to weaken and now still good heavy rain there, but not as much lightning as we had earlier. Yeah, and lightning is a really good indicator of the activity in a storm and the energy that it, the storm contains. So that is good news that it, they seem to be weakening in general. It does seem like they're a little more organized though, a little more lined up than they were earlier. So uh, it wouldn't surprise me as the evening wears on as maybe some of that warmer air kind of works its way a little bit further into the metro. We could see them hold together a little longer. And it wouldn't surprise me if we actually see our temperatures that could warm up a little bit tonight. If we have this mm -hmm. warm front that's coming in from the south. Warmer advection. Moves so. up to the north and we get into that warm sector, we may even actually see our temperatures warm up a little bit during the evening hours rather than cooling down. Yeah, because it's, it's that different. instability. Yeah. It's not like daytime heating where you heat up and you get a summertime thunderstorm. This is warm air that's moving in from the Gulf. That's why it can happen even though the sun's getting ready to set. Exactly, but thank goodness the cooler air that's in place right now help to weaken this storm mm -hmm. that's getting closer to the Atlanta area right now. I want to zoom into this. We'll go into live mode and go in even tighter to the storm right here. As uh, you can see that it's over Douglas County, southern parts of Cobb County. We do have the lightning there and heavy rain, really all of Douglas County uh, getting hit with some good rain coming through there right now. This is about to cross over the line into Fulton County. Be ready in Union City. Get ready in Atlanta as this uh, area of rain is pushing into our area. Very heavy rain with intense lightning uh, that is pushing in, moving in from the east. And so that's going to give us some good showers uh, that will move in. Very heavy rain. We've had some impressive rainfall amounts. Let me put up our rain oh, yeah. totals right Right here and we can query some of those uh, really impressive rainfall amounts where you see those orange dots right here. Sam, I'm going to drive this for you and I'm going to see if we can actually get that to show up or if it's going to show us the yeah. Wow, four inches here and this is uh, just east of Union City. So right there along the perimeter of 285, very heavy rain here in Lawrenceville, uh, three inches. I believe they have flood warnings in place mm -hmm. over there because all of this rain washes off into the little tributaries of streams and eventually makes its way to the larger rivers like the Chattahoochee. And we are seeing some flooding. Big Creek, one of those spots. Of course, Peachtree Creek. We were out there yep. earlier with some cars that were submerged. Look so at that look estimate at this. there, almost five, five inches inches. This is really impressive here. So uh, this is out sort of towards that Chattahoochee Hills area, right? Uh, southwest of uh, the Loop and uh, north of Peachtree City. So you and Thunder Truck went out and y'all were at a swift water rescue that took place earlier. Where exactly was that? And, and what was Peachtree Creek right there in that area that often floods. Uh, Woodward, I think Woodward right Way. Right at um, Peachtree Battle area? Yes, Peachtree okay. Battle and Woodward Way. And one of the, uh, well, there were two vehicles that were trying to put barricades up so people didn't drive into the floodwaters. And as they were thought they could make their way across because they didn't think it was that deep, they got stranded themselves. So they weren't able to place the barricades up and they had to be rescued themselves. So even people who are used to being around flood situations, which they often are right there in the Peachtree Battle area, they became stranded themselves and they had to be uh, rescued. Five people had to be rescued. So. It's, a, it's one of those things, you think you know how fast that water is moving, you think you know how deep it is, That's right. and you really don't. You and really you know, don't. you may drive down a road uh, numerous times and not realize that it's really a decline, you know, going down. Yes, you can't really see that. And then that. when water covers it, you can't tell how far down that's going, and it only takes really six inches or so of water that can make a car float, you know? Um, so it doesn't take a lot of water, and depending on how swiftly it's going, uh, that can make a car float and displace it. So and that's what happens. deeper happened. water. We've got a live look right now. This is our tower cam out of Cobb County uh, that is showing the storms as they're coming in to Cobb County right now. Some dark clouds in association with that right now. Our tower cam may have a good perspective as well. Now we're looking to the south right now. If I had this pointed over to the west, it might show those darker clouds that are coming in from the west, but this is gonna close in. In fact, um, we should tell our go? desk to go roll on this to get a good um, time lapse. Of the city? Okay. Yeah, do you mind I'll telling them that? Your mm -hmm. mic is still gonna be hot though. Um, so if we could see that uh, uh, tower cam that you're seeing right now, they are going to roll, uh, roll on that, so we'll have a time lapse 
So we can see how it looks as these storms roll on the city in just in a few minutes. So 649 uh, right now, we're going to keep doing this stream for just a little while longer. Uh, I see that some of our viewers here, let me go over. Mary Hort Romanowski says full sun in Powder Springs and thunder in the background. That is not good news if you have full sun in Powder Springs um, uh, because this is going to destabilize the atmosphere a little bit more for this next round of showers and storms coming in. Uh, hearing thunder in Buckhead, that's from Janine. Brenda says, what about Macon to Dublin? You're going to have some storms there too. Uh, we're also getting some questions that are coming in from other folks uh, that I'll try to get to live as well. So I'm doing two things at one time, talking to you folks on the stream right now at 11alive.com. Uh, and I think that's also on Facebook Live at 11 Alive page, and I'm doing a Facebook Live on my page right here. Do you think the storm will weaken when the storm moves into the stabilized air? So that's the trick. That's the magic question that we have here because the air is a little cooler over us, over us right now. However, if the warm air is able to come in from the south with that warm front, that will add to the destabilization of the atmosphere, and that would take over uh, the cooler and more stable air that's already in place right now. So I would love it if that warm front doesn't make it here. Hold on, i got to put in my password because my screensaver just went. Hold on, and I have to think. Um, okay, uh, so oh, that wasn't correct. So that's what we're watching I have a long password, don't I? Shoot, and now I forgot it. It's because I can't concentrate. Uh, so I went to, um, to, to my uh, blank screen there, so I've gotta get back to that in just a second. Uh, Lynn Jones is asking about Douglasville. Someone's asking about Ackworth from Diane Fallow. So still, everybody has a chance tonight to see some strong thunderstorms that'll move our way, and we're gonna see these storms. This is just the beginning of that round three. And then we have still that severe thunderstorm warning down here in Heard County. Uh, once you go back a little bit more here into Alabama and you can see those storms that are firing up uh, here from Huntsville and Birmingham within that, that's where we have a tornado watching effect. And these storms could intensify a little bit more as they continue moving on over into West Georgia. This is the round three or the wave three uh, that we've been talking about with the three waves of storms that we will be seeing here. We, we uh, had that this morning. We had another wave this afternoon and now another wave from this evening is coming in and it's all this that's developing back in Alabama where we have a severe thunderstorm warning uh, that is in effect right now. Uh, what would you say, Tyrone? Let, let, okay, here's our Cobb County camera. You can see that that rain is picking up a little bit more as we are uh, looking at that. This is right at uh, 285 and 75 at SunTrust Park and you can see that the conditions are actually going downhill, deteriorating a little bit there uh, as you go into uh, Hall County. We have a question from Allie Burns. What about Banks County? We'll be seeing any severe storm activity tonight. It is possible as the line moves through. I'm hoping that will weaken a little bit as it gets into Banks County uh, and it'll be late for you tonight, really between 10 and a midnight tonight when you see some of these stronger storms that move your way. So this is what we're watching here in Atlanta as we're looking toward downtown, dark clouds, showers, storms about to push into the Atlanta area. And then take a look at radar here on the touchscreen. We've got these storms that are coming in from the west right now through Douglas County, South Cobb, about to move on the west side of the perimeter. Some thunder and lightning with that, not near as intense as this was over into Alabama and into West Georgia. And then this one is still holding together pretty well uh, down into Heard County, uh, and also moving into Coweta County, we have a severe thunderstorm warning with this, with these storms, plenty of lightning with that. We can do a lightning count on this too uh, to show you what's happening with just this one storm right here uh, covering those two counties, 88 lightning strikes in the past 15 minutes. Not like the hundreds that we saw earlier, but still pretty impressive for the size of the storm to have almost 100 lightning strikes uh, just in the past 15 minutes with the system that's moving through there. Yeah, there, uh, there's a lot of moisture down there compared to where we are. Like LaGrange right now has a 72 degree dew point. Really? That shows you where that warm moist boundary is because here in Atlanta we have a 62 degree dew point. So that's indicating that drier air uh, mm -hmm. that we have here. A lot more, if you want to call it juicy air down here to the south uh, that's moving through that's sustaining some of these stronger thunderstorms. And then we saw this going into some slightly drier air, slightly cooler air, slightly more stable air, where this is continuing to weaken as it gets closer to the Atlanta area. Uh, so we're at 654 right now. I'm not sure if we're gonna stop this stream at seven o'clock. Sam and I may need to take a moment to regroup here as we get closer to the seven o'clock hour. Um, uh, but here's what we're watching here as we uh, see this 
area of rain. This is the beginning of wave three, kind of ahead of that main line that's still out to the west. Look at this, another severe thunderstorm warning back in Birmingham. So as this line moves in tonight and interacts with that warm front that's coming in from the south, we will see some of these, stores, uh, these storms sustaining their strength moving into West Georgia again as we go through the evening hours. I'm going to walk you through uh, the timeline here with our high resolution rapid refresh and it will show you, let me take you out of play mode. And there again is a look at Cobb County. You can see that rain as it's coming down right now. Uh, it's gonna be intensifying just a little bit more over Cobb County. Now let's come back to the touchscreen, um, Tyrone, and we can kind of see what we're watching with this timeline. It's okay that I'm over here on the side of the screen. Oh, and I like how you have uh, the, the tower cam still there. This shows these storms over us now, eight o'clock, and then that line developing a little more intense over to the west. That's what's over in Alabama right now. Maybe coming together and forming a little bit more of a line coming in. Uh, 9.30 over in West Georgia, moving into Atlanta between 9.30, 10 and 10.30 going through and then weakening a little more as it goes over to the east into the Athens area and continuing to push on off to the east. And then we'll finally improve going through the evening hours or overnight hours tonight. Tomorrow, we'll have a little bit of wraparound moisture up to the north. You see that, some of the light showers there, but it's gonna be windy and cooler tomorrow with those temperatures that are really gonna be falling during the day uh, for tomorrow afternoon. So that's kind of what we're watching with that timeline. Here again is a look at radar, those storms closing in on Atlanta right now uh, with mainly heavy rain, thunder and lightning, but not really classified as severe. This is the one that's still severe down in uh, Heard County and also into Coweta County. Uh, storm moving in, about to go in over 85 right now. Here coming out of those counties there uh, in uh, parts of Heard County, Coweta County, moving over to the east and we'll uh, continue to move in that direction. Yeah, that local storm report out of uh, Heard County, hail a uh, quarter inch. So one inch hail associated with the Heard County storm. Okay, so let's look again at that hail product here and yeah, it is kind of showing that right now. That kind of verifies what just Sam said and what we had reported from a local storm report. Uh, you can see that hail right there just to the south of Central Hatchie between Texas and Hogansville. And I can put a uh, size on this right here on this computer and you'll see about a, a little more than an inch in diameter. Hmm. So that's still pretty impressive there with that mm -hmm. hail. But it's covering this area on the south side of Heard County. It'll be moving in on the southern parts of Coweta County around Noonan and south of that between Noonan and Luthersville. Also near the Hogansville area is where we're going to see that hail move through. Now that just disappeared, Sam. Uh, well, uh, so I'm see. assuming, so this expires at seven o'clock mm -hmm. and our clock here is at seven o'clock already. So our computer clock may have made that uh, expire, but uh, it'll be interesting to see if they're going to issue another warning possible uh, as it moves on over to well, the, the east. Well, the hail size certainly would warrant it. The hail yeah. size would warrant a warning. So right now, that warning that was set to expire at seven is allegedly expiring now. So we'll hold on with you just for a second to see. We have another three minutes until we get to officially to seven o'clock. It'll be interesting to see if they maybe will hold that together and maybe issue another severe thunderstorm warning over for folks in Coweta County, maybe the northern parts of Meriwether County too, and also into uh, Heard County, continuing into the northern parts of Heard County too. So those are the areas we're watching right now. In Atlanta, these storms uh, closing in on us right now. If we could take uh, another look maybe at our Cobb County camera. And oh, you can see that there at the corner. It's right there. And there you look at those clouds, uh, kind of some low, low hanging clouds with that and the rain coming down, not looking particularly bad. Still some, some good rain right there at SunTrust Park. Good thing there's not a game there tonight with that heavy rain that's moving through. And again, remote 56, if we can see that, that's our camera that we're looking toward downtown right now. We're about to see some of these storms sweep into Atlanta as we're looking toward the south. And we'll be able to kind of see that storm come in from the west, which will be the right side of your screen. And we'll see those storms that'll just sweep over the city really in the next few minutes with some of that heavier rain uh, that's gonna be pushing in and some of the thunder and lightning too. But well, let me look at the hail. Uh, I don't think we're seeing any, even any small hail here. Well, there is uh, over on the west side, west side of the perimeter. See this right mm -hmm. here? That's indicating some of the small hail uh, that we have uh, with these storms. That's really more like pea size, maybe marble size hail with that coming in on the west side of the perimeter. So just small hail with that over on the west side. That wouldn't be enough to warrant another warning to come in, but still this down to the south, 
Whenever you have hail an inch in diameter or larger, that is enough to sustain a uh, severe thunderstorm warning. So we're going to hang with you just for a second to see if they're going to reissue uh, that warning to maybe potentially include uh, the you know, more of Coweta County, maybe more of uh, Meriwether County and the northern parts if it's going to continue uh, for folks in Herd or Troop County as well. So again, I, I can see the change already in that camera at the bottom of your screen as we are looking in over Atlanta as those clouds are kind of getting darker now coming in from the right, which is to the west there uh, for those storms that are going to push our way. So Sam, do you take over just for a second, if you will? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to go out and ask them at the desk a quick question. But Sam's going to cover you. We're going to hold with you for just a few more minutes on our stream here. Um, and we may go ahead and log off just so Sam and I can regroup if they don't issue another warning here for folks on the south side. I'll be right, right. back. Sure. Okay. Well, we have this line. It's kind of more organized as we've went through the last uh, 15 minutes or so. It isn't any stronger than it was earlier. It's just notice these uh, areas are connected just a little bit more. These areas of heavier rain, these thunderstorms that are moving through. You can see here's one right now that is moving on in with some lightning uh, right around the Vining Smyrna area with some heavy rain already. We have seen some uh, two to three inches of rain so far today uh, across northwest Atlanta as this final line moves through tonight with that threat for severe weather. We'll also have some very intense uh, heavy rain. So we're probably getting a little bit more out of this one. And then, of course, there's a lot more behind uh, behind it with the next line here that is uh, off to the west as we take you out a little bit further west. And you can see what is on approach here across uh, northwestern Georgia and, of course, e uh, across eastern Alabama. These cells are going to be moving into west Georgia very, very shortly. We have a couple of severe warnings here just east of Birmingham and then south of Birmingham, not too far from the Alabaster area. So that will be coming in most likely as we head into to the late evening hours, probably around uh, between 8, 9, 10 o'clock. We'll start to see those moving in across uh, West Georgia and then into the metro. Still the biggest lightning maker here uh, across Heard and uh, parts of northern Troop County moving to the east. This particular cell uh, moving to the east uh, right around 45 miles per hour or so. So uh, if we go ahead and put a track on this, you can see all of that lightning. I need to query that in a second. Oops, that didn't quite work. Let's put that in at 45 miles per hour or so, and I may not be out quite far enough, so I'm going to have to go out a little bit more. Excuse me for that. I'm going to have to get it out just a little bit more here so we have a little more room to work with, and then we'll try it again. So um, I'm going to put a track on this guy. See if I can get it out to, yeah, there we go, back to around 45. And so that's going to put it in um, the heavier rain moving into Grantville. And not too far away, eight minutes or so, Luthersville around 718, Sonoya a little after the half hour, Griffin at 755, if it holds together. And a lot of these have, have been weakening as they have moved in here. So one more thing, I want to, I have to track how much lightning, I want to see how much lightning is in that particular uh, system here, that particular thunderstorm, I should say. And uh, right now, as we query this one cell, which is just north of Hogansville, you can see we have uh, 78 strikes in the past 15 minutes. So uh, a pretty active night still ahead as this moves out of Alabama. I shouldn't say pretty active. It could be, it could be a very active night. Um, Chris, don't you think, as this line becomes more organized and moves on in? Um, we do have, of course, that threat for flooding. We still are concerned, having seen so much rain today in a short period of time, that uh, we could still likely see more flooding across much of the metro area and all across North Georgia, as um, there's nowhere for that rain to go so quickly. A lot exactly. of the, a lot of debris in the rain sewers and such tend to clog things up when we get heavy downpours. So I just saw from the National Weather Service that they are not going to extend that warning. Uh, I may be off here. Hold on. Okay, sorry. Hey, that was bad. That, I just saw from the National. National Weather Service that they uh, have let that warning expire. They now have what they call a significant weather advisory in effect for folks in Coweta County, Fayette, that area as this rain moves in. So since there's no new warning, Sam and I are going to go ahead and take a break. We're going to uh, kind of stop our uh, feed that we have going on right now for the stream. Uh, I believe they're going to put on the radar loop so you can still keep an eye on that. Sam and I are going to just take a moment to regroup catch our breath a little bit as we've been talking a lot lately. <laughs> and um, 
We will end our stream right now, but they'll continue to put the loop up there for you so you can watch these storms move in. We will be breaking into programming tonight if necessary with this next wave that's coming in during the evening hours tonight if any tornado warnings are issued. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I'll be doing another Facebook Live and more streams in just a little bit later as this next round of rain and storms moves our way. Meanwhile, be safe, be weather aware tonight. Sam and I are gonna keep tracking this for you. We'll have more updates for you throughout the evening. And finally, this is going to be out of here by midnight tonight. So and then it a, gets chilly. And then it gets cold tomorrow and windy too. <laughs>
not seeing um, as much lightning. We're not seeing as much hail uh, with them as we saw earlier. So with this third round that's coming in uh, during the overnight hours or during the late night hours, we are uh, hopefully going to see uh, a little more stable atmosphere. The temperature is dropping just a little bit. In fact, let me look at these temperatures because we were watching the potential. So this afternoon, our high only made it into the 60s. But as this warm front comes in from the south, we actually may warm up a little bit, which no, we're still holding in the 60s. That's good. That's really good for us. As those storms come into Alabama and they hit some of this cooler air, we're going to see them kind of weakening somewhat. Still 73, though, in LaGrange. And if this warmer air ahead of the front is able to advect northward and spread that warmer air into our area and more instability, then those storms will hold together um, as they come in to our area. Um, so let me take you back to radar. Sarah says, what are the projections for the storm out of Anniston? Um, so it just weakened. Uh, it's still going to hold together. Uh, and the one that I'm most concerned about is this one that is over uh, right now with a lot of lightning still north of Anniston. Here, I'll put this into live mode. And this storm uh, is moving here to the north and east at about 40 miles an hour. So I'm going to put a track on this for you that would move into, come on now, there we go. Uh, moving up to the north and east at about 45 miles an hour. That is going to take that storm into Cedartown at 8. Oh, shoot. Hold on. Let me do that again. I meant to move the box, but instead I made a new track. North and east at 45. And I'll move that box out of the way. There we go. Uh, Cedartown at 819. Lindale at 831. You Harley at 846. Cartersville 856. And then to White, Georgia at 904. Uh, with this next round. That is the strongest storm that we have there over the line into Alabama that has very heavy rain, lightning with it. And let's look at the hail again just to see if this is... So this hail core between Anniston and Piedmont may be growing just a little bit, but still not as impressive as the hail that we had earlier. And, and this could intensify a little bit more as it continues moving over to the uh, east uh, into West Georgia. So we're going to watch that hail core and see if we're going to see uh, that growing a little bit more with the potential for severe weather uh, that could grow out of that. So, okay, look, they just issued. There you see that polygon that just came up. That is a severe thunderstorm warning. Uh, let me put the warning up here for you. This is going to be for Calhoun, Cherokee, and Cleburne County in Alabama. So it includes Cleburne County, Alabama uh, with that severe thunderstorm warning there. Uh, it is going to be in effect until 8.30. I know that says 7.30, but that's central time. It'll be 8.30 our time. Um, Sam, oh, never mind. They, they have it up. I see they have the crawl up. Never mind. Um, so I'm just making sure that they're running that crawl on 11 Alive. Um, Tanya Keys is asking about rotation. I'll put this on velocity. I'm not really seeing any rotation with those storms over there right now. Uh, that's something, though, that we'll have to monitor as it moves over to the east and into, um, into Georgia if those storms are going to increase a little bit. But right now, that's the only severe thunderstorm warning we have is over in Cleburne County, Alabama. So I want you folks in Polk County right here at Cedartown. You need to be prepared for these storms. Also, folks in Floyd County uh, there in the Rome area, these storms are going to be tracking into your area, Polk County, parts of southern Floyd County, uh, pushing your way, heavy rain, intense lightning, and some hail in association with that too. Uh, we had half dollar size hail. Uh, that was earlier in the afternoon or late afternoon at 550 in Harrelson County. That was on I-20 at exit 5. Um, Marie Queen says, are we in for round three in Doorville? Yes, you're going to see some of these storms here that are to the west move through during the evening hours. Uh, Charlotte Elmore says, are we clear to leave in the morning? Uh, yes, I believe so. You will have better weather tomorrow, better travel weather coming in from Florida, uh, moving to the north. Uh, today would, wouldn't have been a good idea to drive into all that, but you will have better weather. Uh, it's going to be a little breezy, a little rainy. Uh, I'm not rainy, but uh, rainy here in North Georgia with a few light showers, but windy and cooler during the day for that drive back. Pat, how can we expect any bad weather in Loganville? You have a potential in Loganville of some stronger storms that will move through there. I do think once these move east to, of Atlanta, they should be a little bit weaker there. Uh, someone says, I have a great smile. Thank you. I appreciate that. Diane Sestero says the atmosphere is, let me see if I can scroll back. This is really harshing my mellow and I can't scroll back like this. Atmosphere is moving fast. 
Uh, Thunder and Lightning east of Stockbridge from Sharon Hall. Thank you for that. Patricia Berry, round three in Cherokee. Yes, it's coming tonight. LaGrange, you're going to see more storms tonight. Villa Rica, yes, you will. Lithonia, yes, you're going to see some of these storms moving in. Joshua says, I just saw the radar showing movement. Um, oh, gosh, I can't keep up with you guys. Movement generally southwest to me that the system is... Um, I can't scroll back. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm trying to keep up with your questions, but this is not letting me scroll back. I'm trying to answer live as they're coming by. Kerry Johnson, Jackson County. Yes, you will have uh, the potential for more storms tonight. I think they'll be weaker over on the east side. Mableton, yes. Everybody who's asking about your city, yeah. You're going to have some showers tonight, the potential for some storms um, that are moving through the area. With this, that is coming in from Alabama. So prepare for some more storms coming in tonight with some thunder and lightning. Some of that rain could be heavy at times. And a thunder and lightning in association with that and maybe some small hail. What we're seeing so far... Um, so Jericho says this was not as bad as y'all thought. Just admit it. We have had numerous tornado warnings here in our area today numerous storms. We have damage. We have flooding. We have lightning fires, structure fires that were caused by lightning. Yes, this was a severe event that we had today. So by saying for me to admit it, that it's not as strong as I expected, it was as strong as I expected. And we can look at the damage and the people who were impacted by this to prove that it was as, um, as we were expecting it to be. With three waves moving through, we had the timing of one wave this morning, another wave this afternoon, and another wave coming in tonight. And that's exactly what we're experiencing. Uh, Jericho says, um, again, I know. Nat Zachary starting to rain and thunder and lightning, Heather Varner, Harshing my mellow, coolest weatherman ever. Sherry Bailey says, audio is fine here. Um, I hope y'all see the clear map behind me. Earlier, for some reason, it was fuzzy behind me. We couldn't figure that out, but I think everything is correct now. Are these cut-in times? Oh, that's... So, 8.39, we're going to do a cut-in, 9.39 and 10.14. All right, so help me remind that. Help remind me of that. Um, Sally says, thanks for your awesome coverage. Jennifer McConnell with Auburn being on the outside of the tornado watch line. What are the chances it's still happening here? So it's going to be weaker um, as it moves over to the east. That's why the tornado watch line cuts off for those areas to the east because it is going to be a little bit weaker there. Um, Amy says the temperature stayed at 61, so uh, not much heating. But what we have to see is that as a warm front comes in from the south, we may see some warmer air that comes in to kind of replace that cooler, more stable air. And we're hoping these temperatures over North Georgia will hold steady and not actually warm up as that warm front comes up from, uh, from the south. Nicole Durant, tornadoes in Villa Rica. So we don't have anything out there right now. Um, any rotation in northwest, we don't see that. Susan Seal says you rock always. Thank you. Um, Jessica Ham, tornadoes in Locust Grove, nothing in Locust Grove right now. Everyone in our viewing area has the potential to see more showers and thunderstorms moving in tonight with wind. The tornado risk with this system for tonight is a little bit lower than what we had today. We are hoping that this last round that comes in tonight isn't going to be as, as, as active as it was earlier with the two rounds that those did prompt tornado warnings earlier. Uh, with some damage here that has been uh, left behind. Um, is Villa Rica in the clear for tornadoes tonight? Nope, no one is in the clear for tornadoes. We have a tornado watch in effect until 10 o'clock. Until this storm system moves through and sweeps out of our area, we're not going to be in the clear until that goes through. I do think that the tornado risk this evening is going to be a little bit lower. And um, then we'll have some showers and storms here with some wind damage possible with that. Um, Someone's asking about Barrow County and the tornado watch. Let me put the tornado watch up for you and you can see these counties that are in the watch. So they've canceled the watch for those counties on the south side, but all of these counties in North Georgia are included in that uh, tornado watch here. West Georgia, Metro Atlanta, it cuts off at Gwinnett County. Uh, it does include Walton County. It does not include Barrow. Oconee County it does not include Athens. It does not include Hall County. So that's where that watch cuts off. We expect as these storms move to the east, it will move into a less favorable environment to be severe. Uh, but still, this northwest, you know, metro Atlanta, north and west Georgia is still in this tornado watch until 10 o'clock tonight. And as these storms move in tonight, uh, that's where we have that potential for the storms uh, to still come, become severe. We are hoping, uh, hold on just a second. Y'all just aired tornado watches on the bottom of the screen. Yes, we did. We're running crawls out there for the um, tornado watch, correct? 
Um, James says, you've done a great job. Thank you. Jody says, Thank you. thankful for meteorologists. Years ago, people did not have warnings. We are blessed. Thank you. Uh, Robin Kendrick, um, it was black as night most of the day today in Loganville. Very scary. Thanks for that. Kimberly says, you're awesome. Thanks for keeping us posted. Lori said, you have provided the best info out there for this event. I really appreciate that. Using Facebook to keep us safe. Thank you, Lori. Uh, and, and I'm sorry if I'm missing some of your questions. These, these questions and, and comments are coming in so quickly. I'm trying to keep up, and it's not letting me scroll backwards to catch up with them. Um, Shanna Oliver, Gilmer County, East LJ, I'm relying on what is said for you, no TV. So uh, you're still going to have some storms coming through. Guys, everybody look at these showers and storms coming in from Alabama. This line is a little more broken. I do think the line is going to become a, a little more linear or come together a little bit more as the system continues to move through here tonight as we're going to see this severe thunderstorm warning that is back into Alabama right there for parts of Cleburne County, Alabama. If this is about to move into Floyd County and also Polk County. So I wouldn't be surprised if we have a severe thunderstorm warning that's going to be issued there for Floyd and Polk at any time. Let me see if I can remember my password um, to log back in. Uh, my screensaver just came up on this computer. Um, it is now saying significant weather advisory for Floyd, Harrelson, and Polk County. Uh, with that storm that's coming out of Alabama. So at this point, they're going with a significant weather advisory for Polk, Floyd County, and also uh, Northwestern Harrelson County. Uh, so that's good news that the Weather Service is, um, is seeing here what, let's see, what did this person say? I just switched from a different stream of this and said live, but you aren't answering our comments. I just answered your comment. Ryan Wilson, I hate Alabama. <laughs> They always send us storms. Uh, Carrie Rich says, thank you for keeping us safe. What a stressful day. I hope you get some rest. Thank you. Uh, someone says, please explain watch and warning. A watch means that conditions are likely. A tornado watch means conditions are likely for or possible for tornadoes to occur because uh, atmosp atmospheric conditions are conducive for that. So that's usually for a longer period of time and includes a lot more counties. And then a warning is issued when there is either a tornado warning or a severe thunderstorm warning when there's actual severe storms, a tornado warning a tornado or severe thunderstorm uh, moving into the area. So a warning is when you definitely take action. When there's a watch issued, you simply watch, you be aware, have your plan in place so that when a warning is issued, you will know um, exactly what to do. Cindy's asking about Blairsville. So Blairsville up in Northeast Georgia, your chances are a little bit lower for tornadoes and severe weather here because it's gonna be a little bit weaker as it moves in here. Um, Jamie says her dogs are pacing in Noonan. Helen Cox says, thank you. Whitney Watts, time for the worst tonight in Northwest Georgia. Uh, from now, for the next uh, hour or so in Northwest Georgia, we've got these storms coming out of Alabama right now. One of those severe at Piedmont, Alabama, about to push into, P into Cedartown in Polk County and Floyd County. Heavy rain and intense lightning. So Northwest Georgia uh, between now and the next hour or so. Um, Abby Harrison is Walnut Grove to get another round. Yes, you'll see some tonight. Beth Hamill, are any of those lines? Um, Going to Spalding County, um, Jennifer Pomeroy is Gwinnett County in the clear now. Nope, you've got some more uh, showers that are going to be coming your way tonight. Look at all this in West Georgia. All right, a new tornado warning just issued over in Piedmont, Alabama. You know, this is, Cleburne County is our um, viewing area. So, guys, um, are y'all listening in the control room? We probably, I don't know if Jennifer is still here. But we have a tornado warning for Cleburne County, which is one of our counties we at least need to go on for a few minutes here. Guys, I'm going to have to move this over here so it won't be in the shot as we're on air. But y'all hang with me. Are, is anybody in the control room? Are they listening to me? Ty, can you hear me? I think we need to get on the air with this tornado warning for Cleburne County, Alabama. Um, can y'all hear me? Yes. So let's go on the air and then have someone have Jennifer direct me as to how long she wants me to stay on. All right. Okay.
I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers. We're tracking this next round of showers and storm activity that's moving in from Alabama and into West Georgia. Sorry to interrupt your program, but we do have a tornado warning that is in effect just over the line into Cleburne County, Alabama. You may be saying, why am I breaking into programming for that? Because Cleburne County is one of the counties that we are responsible for here in Atlanta uh, for weather coverage. So I want to show you this. I'm also showing you this because it is going to be tracking uh, to the north and east, and it could be impacting areas of Polk County, Georgia, and potentially into uh, southern parts of Floyd County. Right now, Polk County, northern Harrelson County, and southern Floyd County are in a severe thunderstorm warning, but you can see here that there's the tornado warning that is in effect. Uh, this is for Cleburne County, Alabama. Uh, this is just over the line. Again, a county that we are responsible for here in the Atlanta viewing area for Cleburne County, Alabama. This is in effect. Now, this is 745 Central Time since it's in Alabama. It's really in effect for 845 our time. And we are watching this and tracking this storm because, yes, it is in Alabama now. Again, in our viewing area, but it is going to be crossing over into Polk County, the potential, uh, potentially into a northern Harrelson County in southern Floyd County, you are in a severe thunderstorm warning right now, but if this circulation holds together, it is possible that uh, it could extend also over into uh, Polk County and Floyd County as well. This is the area that we are watching right here. It's moved through Piedmont. Uh, we have plenty of thunder and lightning and very heavy rain in association with that. Here's the velocity mode. We can see some circulation. Now again, this is far away from our radar site, so a lot of times it takes a little bit for the velocity in order uh, to, to actually pick up since it's so far away. But we're seeing some rotation right here south of Piedmont, Alabama, and this is moving up toward the north and east, potentially uh, that could impact areas of Polk County, Floyd County, and maybe even northern Harrelson County. So this is a tornado warning uh, in effect for folks in Piedmont, uh, in Cleburne County, Alabama, uh, with the storm that continues to move up toward the north and to the east, again, potentially impacting areas of West Georgia. Uh, but for now, in West Georgia, we do have the severe thunderstorm warning that is in effect. Uh, this is going to be in effect for... And ...that's developing coming out of Cleburne County, Alabama, and crossing over the line into West Georgia. So we're going to watch this very closely. And Sam is monitoring our National Weather Service chat right now, and she'll be able to see if they're giving us any, any indication as to whether or not this rotation may be strong enough that they may move this warning over into West Georgia, uh, into Polk County, uh, northern parts of Harrelson County, possibly even into parts of southern uh, Floyd County as well. But for now, those counties there in northwest Georgia have a severe thunderstorm warning uh, in effect until 845. We've been telling you since yesterday about three waves of rain and storms moving through. Uh, we had one this morning, another one that's coming through uh, during the afternoon, and this is round three that's coming in tonight. We cannot call the all clear until we get these storms out of here tonight, and we think that'll be around 11 o'clock or midnight tonight when we finally see these storms push off to the east and we can finally call the all clear uh, for our area. But these storms that are coming in from Alabama, uh, you can see them as they're lining up from Scottsboro, Alabama, Alabama. They're now already to the east of Birmingham and continuing to move, move through. So this is the back edge of that. We just have to wait for this to come through. And these storms have the potential still of damaging winds, hail, and also some rotation that's coming through. Sam, you have any new information there? Um, well, just on the uh, Paulding County, Northwest Paulding, Northern Harrelson, Southern Floyd, and uh, Polk County, uh, that severe thunderstorm warning, it does have ping pong ball size hail. So that is very large hail, 60 mile per hour wind gusts. And uh, that is also the warning that uh, they said a tornado possible. So we have to watch that one really closely as well. At times when the National Weather Service issues severe thunderstorm warnings, there are different classifications for thunderstorm warnings. And this is a thunderstorm warning that says tornado possible because of this rotation that we're seeing back um, into Alabama here, including in Cleburne County. Here's a look at the hail, and I can put the hail size on there right now. Sam mentioned that the warning said ping pong ball size hail, and this largest hail core that we see right there is about two inches in diameter. So that is some very large hail uh, coming through there right now. Again, just over the line into Alabama in Cleburne County.
County. That's where we have a tornado warning that is in effect. This is going to be crossing over into West Georgia, uh, and that's there is a severe thunderstorm warning in effect for Polk County, Southern Floyd County, and the northern parts of Harrelson County. But within that severe thunderstorm warning, it also has the statement of a tornado is possible uh, if that circulation is going to be holding together coming out of Alabama. They may extend that warning into Floyd County. Now, I know folks here in Atlanta, uh, you may be saying, where's my show? Uh, I want to see what's going on here. But we are trying to keep everyone posted for this severe weather that is moving through. This is the next wave of rain coming in. Just look at this as I put this into motion here. Uh, with these storms, we have a couple of clusters on the south side. Here's Atlanta. Henry County right now pushing on over to the east. Uh, we have another one here in northern Coweta County. Plenty of lightning in association with that. Also moving to the east, it'll be impacting Fayette County, South Fulton County. Uh, we may see some of that here in Atlanta. And then additional storms here uh, that are moving through to the north and west coming out of Alabama, pushing into, again, Floyd, uh, Polk County and also Northern Harrelson County. We have these storms in Bartow County with thunder and lightning in association with them and more of that here in Northeast Alabama pushing into Northwest uh, Georgia in Dade, Walker County, Chattooga County as well. You are next in line for those storms as they move into your area. Once we get these through here during the evening hours, our severe weather threat will go down quickly late night tonight and overnight tonight. So you'll be able to sleep a little bit better tonight uh, without any severe weather threats once we get past 11 o'clock and midnight tonight. Now this tornado warning, Sam, is really shrinking very quickly, mm -hmm. which is good news. Let me put this into live mode and I'm gonna, actually gonna go back to velocity so we can see if we have a good look at that rotation really and what is left of it. And it's right here, it's kind of under the warning. This is the rotation that we're seeing there about to cross over the line into West Georgia. And our National Weather Service office here in Peachtree City is coordinating with the National Weather Service office in Birmingham as, the, as they watch these storms cross over the state line. And this is strong enough to be a tornado warning over in Alabama. If it weakens a little more, which some of these storms have been showing signs of weakening as they move into Georgia, our air here a little more stable, a little cooler. So if this rotation that we see right here, that looks you know so pretty important, you know, halfway impressive here. This isn't a classic uh, good hook echo that we have here, but this could be holding together enough uh, to see if it's strong enough that they may extend this over this tornado warning. So this is going to be critical over the next few minutes as we expect this warning here in Alabama will expire soon again in Cleburne County and then push over into uh, northwest Georgia here into the northern parts of Harrelson into Polk County right here and maybe even the, into southern Floyd. So that's why there's a severe thunderstorm warning in a effect there until 845, waiting to see if this rotation holds together to potentially prompt a tornado warning uh, for areas of uh, Polk, uh, Harrelson County, and possibly even the southern parts of Floyd County. Now the Polk County storm has quarter size hail being reported from the emergency manager Caddy there. So uh, Caddy Trammell is reporting quarter size hail in Vincent Mountain area and reports of trees down in the Vincent Mountain area okay. as well. That's from that storm Polk system County. here. So in Polk County, as this is moving in here, uh, we have that potential for strong storms to move in. Uh, we have a history. This cell has a history of producing some damage back into Alabama. Sam just mentioned some of the damage uh, in the path of this as it's moving into Polk County right now. Uh, north of Fruithurst, we have that heaviest storm activity moving through with a large hail with that too. This is the hail core that we're seeing right there. Some of that hail is about two inches in diameter. Mm -hmm. We mentioned golf ball to ping pong size hail with that that's about to cross over into uh, the Polk County area. So again, doing the severe thunderstorm warning for you. Uh, live coverage of this as we have the tornado warning in effect in one of our counties that, uh, that we're responsible for, which is Cleburne County, Alabama, just to the north of Fruithurst. There, here's I-20 right here. Here is Atlanta. We'll show you the perspective. Let me just widen out and we'll put it back on reflectivity here as we widen out. And uh, you can see the perspective of what we're watching in Atlanta with these storms storms are developing. This is the strongest one that we have right now in Southern Floyd County moving through. Plenty of lightning in association with that. And that's going to be moving up to the north and to the east. These storms approaching
leaving Atlanta. We'll have a lot of heavy rain with them and maybe some small hail in association with them too. But waiting to watch right here to see if this rotation holds together uh, coming through parts of Polk County and southern Floyd County and the northern parts of Harrelson County. Yeah, so no, no uh, warning yet, but uh, the um, MIC at uh, Peachtree uh, and Peachtree City, Keith Stillman, just saying that they have been ch chatting with Birmingham and rotation will be entering Northwest Heard County. So no warning yet, but they are watching that rotation there. So keeping a very close eye on it in case it does uh, continue to uh, strengthen here. Okay, so we'll keep an eye on that. Were you saying Heard County? Um, in uh, Heard County, Heard County. Okay, so that's with this down here that's to the south with some potential rotation oh, that we could have down there too. Keith Stillman said Harrelson, sorry. Harrelson, okay, so that's this part right here. <laughs> sorry about that. Okay, so that's that part right there uh, where we see that rotation, and that's what Keith's talking about from the National Weather Service. That's where we see that rotation could impact northern Harrelson County. So our <laughs> National Weather Service office on top of this as well, coordinating, as I mentioned earlier, uh, with the Birmingham National Weather Service office as this is crossing over the line. Just a little, very small warning there of a tornado warning in Cleburne County, Alabama, but the significant Part of that is that we have the potential of this rotation uh, that could hold together as which is right there and that still looks pretty good um, as that's going to be crossing over the line from Alabama into West Georgia. We're going to let a couple more scans come through here uh, to see if that warning could possibly be extended. You know this is not our classic look of a good hook. Uh, there of a really strong rotation, but there is some rotation there and whether or not that's going to be strong enough to uh, to extend that warning into Georgia. Uh, we'll wait and see on that because these storms have had a tendency uh, tonight to weaken a little bit as they move into our state. And some of them have been holding together with severe thunderstorms, which this one is. Okay, so here's that rotation. That latest scan just came in. This is over northern Harrelson County, the southern parts of uh, Polk County. They have not extended the warning out of Alabama into Polk County yet. So we're going to just hold on with you just for a minute to see if that is going to be extended into our area. If we see a red box show up here or polygon, that will indicate that new if a new tornado warning has been issued. So Sam's monitoring that chat right now and the new data that's coming in. Let's take another look at the hail product uh, while we are here. And the hail uh, size has actually come down a little bit. It's not looking as large <laughs> as it was a few minutes ago. That's a good sign. Mm -hmm. We can also check on the lightning as well to see uh, how that is looking. Lightning still looks pretty impressive here. But some of these numbers may be going down 249 lightning strikes in the past 15 minutes. That's what we often look at when we are seeing uh, whether or not these storms are weakening or not. If the hail size go down, if the lightning count goes down, that's an indicator that these storms are weakening somewhat. But this is strong enough to be a severe thunderstorm warning uh, for folks in northern Harrelson County, uh, Polk County, and the southern parts of Floyd County with the storm that's moving up toward the north and east. Tornado warning uh, for Cleburne County. I expect that that should be ending because uh, the circulation is now out of Cleburne County and it's crossed over into Georgia, into Northwest Georgia. And at this point, there is not a tornado warning that has been extended out. So right now we're coming up on 830. What I think we're gonna do, if I, unless I hear other, otherwise from our control room, uh, since this warning has not been extended uh, into Georgia, we may go ahead and take you back to your regularly scheduled program. I was in the middle of a Facebook Live uh, doing that. I'll continue our coverage on my Facebook page, Chris Holcomb, 11 Alive, on a Facebook Live um, cut in there. So I feel comfortable right now that since that circulation has moved out of Alabama, this tornado warning is going to end. And we're hoping that the National Weather Service uh, does not, and if somebody's trying to talk to me, I can't hear you. Uh, we're hoping that the National Weather Service does not um, uh, extend this over into Georgia. I think if they were going to, they already would have because that uh, area of weak circulation that we're seeing right here has moved over into Polk County, the northern parts of Harrelson County. And with these new scans here, we still have just some weak rotation there, but maybe not strong enough for that to be um, be classified or strong enough in order to issue a new tornado warning. So I'm waiting to get some direction. I'd like to go back to regularly scheduled program and, and I hear y'all pushing the button, but I can't hear what you're saying. Uh, that's moving in here. If somebody could come back here and tell us no or, or, or let, um, I'll let Sam know of whether or not we can go back to regular schedule they programming. They did issue a significant weather advisory, by the way, on those counties. So um, they're saying since it's a significant
Connecticut Weather Advisor, we can go to break. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Take you back to regularly scheduled program as these storms have weakened a little bit as they're moving in. And we are going to continue to watch these storms tonight, even though we're going back to regularly scheduled programming. Uh, we want you to know that Sam and I are here tracking these storms. We will break in again if needed, if any additional tornado warnings are issued. So again, don't let your guard down tonight. Storms aren't over. Once we get to 11, midnight, 1 o'clock, you can rest a little easier. We'll keep tracking these. And we'll have more for you coming up. The canine advantage too. It kills fleas, ticks, and mosquitoes. <laughs> mosquitoes too? Yep, kills all three through contact. No biting required. Wish my owner knew about canine and Vanix too. Ow! Well, could be worse. Huh. Galore. So someone was hitting. Yeah, someone was hitting the button on the IFB, but I couldn't it something was wrong. I don't know if somebody had an earpiece plugged in or something, um, which does that sometimes. I could they were pushing the button, but no sound was coming out. So thank you guys um, for tuning in. I'm going to go ahead and take a break. We just did a cut in live on TV and live here on Facebook. Um, so I'm sorry if I'm not been able to get to your questions. Somebody's asking if they could, if they should cancel T-ball practice in Bartow County. Um, uh, not for tomorrow. You'll be fine tomorrow. Uh, if you're having it tonight, I wouldn't go out there tonight. Um, Adam Lee, any news on the storm that's coming towards Gwinnett, Loganville? Uh, so. Uh, there's nothing directly coming in to Gwinnett Loganville. There's a storm to the south of you. Uh, let me move this back over here and I'll get, was that okay, Jennifer? I'm still on Facebook Live though. Oh. That we ended? Yeah. Y yes, I was trying to tell you the end. It okay. Crazy. It wouldn't come, yeah, it was, I can hear you pushing the button. I can hear you now. Yeah, I don't know what, what it is. Can I hear you now? <laughs> so, um, he's going to the Facebook Live now. Let's see here. Oh, if somebody said great job. So what I'm going to do is 8.33. I've been doing this Facebook Live for a little over 30 minutes. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take a break. I may do another one at 9 o'clock um, as we're watching these storms move through. So um, I'm going to do a cut in on 11 Alive at 8.39. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and log off here from Facebook. I may do another Facebook Live coming up at 9 o'clock tonight. And um, then uh, hopefully we'll see these conditions improving as we get to the late night hour. So thank you guys for tuning in. Sorry if I couldn't get to all of your questions, but I appreciate you tuning in. And we'll keep watching these storms as they move through tonight. Stay weather.
County. That's what you're showing right there. Uh, north of Rock Mart, uh, maybe Dime Size Hail is probably the largest that we have there. North of Rock Mart between Taylorsville and the Rock Mart area. And then as you get up into Chickamauga, another area of potentially Dime Size Hail uh, with those storms, and that's moving up into Chattanooga. So we're not seeing a lot of hail with this. There's a little bit of North Cherokee County, maybe Pea Size Hail north of Waleska right there. Kind of what you're seeing right here and also right there at Waleska. And um, uh, that's what we've got going on with that. Let me put it back on reflectivity. And someone is saying that Austell is not getting rain. So, so this is what you're seeing in Cobb County. Some showers from Kennesaw to Roswell. More showers from Atlanta southward, but I'm not really seeing anything over Austell either. You don't have any rain there, but some of that is coming in from West Georgia. Uh, so these showers are good, good rainmakers. Uh, they've got some thunder and lightning with them and some small hail, but at this point, uh, they are not classified as severe uh, with these, uh, this, this round that's moving through. Once this pushes through, we're going to be finished for the nighttime hour. So we're going to watch this back edge right there that's through Rome. That's going to be the last of it, and this continues moving on over to the east and is going to push out of here and then improve our weather conditions while we're sleeping tonight during the overnight hours. Now, tomorrow's going to be windy, cool. We're going to have some wraparound light showers up in North Georgia, but nothing severe uh, up there. But just still that potential uh, for a few isolated, stronger thunderstorms here tonight as this front passes through. At this point, as everything has been moving to the east, it's actually been weakening a little bit, which is good news uh, that we don't have to worry about a huge threat for storms that are going to be moving through. That would be tornado makers or anything like that. So uh, let me see if I can scroll backwards here. Nope. Again, it's not letting me scroll backwards. And I'm doing something funny is happening with my earpiece. Um, I, I lost your did you lose it too? Okay. Maybe that's it. Um, so I'm going to try. If I, I can't scroll back to read everyone's questions. If you asked a question and want to ask it again, I will try. Uh, I'll try to get back to that. I don't know why it's not letting me do that. Kathy Trinkle says, stay safe. Storms went through Kansas City. Uh, Lucy Chumley, thank you from Pickens County. Mary Beth Etheridge, the end of the storms, woohoo. We're all excited for that. Wendy Thomas, thank goodness it's almost over. It's been a long day. Caitlin Paulus is checking about Loganville. You still have a chance for showers tonight and some storms. They're going to be a lot weaker when they get to your area. Dawson County, you've got some in the northern part of the county right now. See that? That's northern Dawson right there uh, moving through. Uh, Madison, Georgia, uh, you're going to see a few showers that will move through over on the east, but they'll be weaker when they get here. Devin says, thank you for all the live chats. We really appreciate the updates you give us. I appreciate that. Heather says, thank you. Caitlin just talked about Loganville. You'll have some showers, but weaker. Uh, still chain shawls growing in Walnut Grove. Prayers for everyone. Kathy Turpin uh, says Morgan County. Uh, you're going to have some storms that come through there, but they'll be weaker. Will Noonan have more bad weather tonight? So uh, you've got some storms just to the west of you. Uh, LaGrange, they're coming in closer to you too. Those storms will be pushing through Carroll County, Troop County, uh, Heard County, eventually into Coweta County uh, with some heavy rain. That's what we're seeing right there. See that? That's coming through. Heavy rain, thunder, and lightning with that, but hopefully not severe storms. I uh, just had a question about Augusta. Yes, they will have some showers and storms tonight. Hopefully, though, tomorrow is going to be better for uh, the rounds in Augusta. Um, this is a question from Chris Rodriguez asking about... Guys, it's not Let me scroll backwards. Is it easier to forecast storms than uh, snow? Uh, yes, I think so. Um, snow is just such an intricate um, precip forecast where with storms we can say anywhere between a half inch and an inch or one to two inches, but that difference in uh, forecasting the water or moisture content makes a big difference in the snow amount too. So it's a little more tricky with snow. Hearing uh, thunder in South Paulding, Brittany says, are the storms in Rome moving into Pickens? Yes. Uh, they're going to be moving into Pickens County from Rome. They're in Bartow County right now, pushing into Gordon County. And eventually, they've got some showers and storms in Pickens right now near Tate. Adairsville, still going to see a few showers. They'll be ending soon, though, in Adairsville. You're on the back edge of this. Um, Robin is asking about Pickens. We just talked about that. Lisa, do you think Athens will have any more severe weather? Most likely. I think I just locked, uh, um, froze up there because on my phone I got an emergency alert for a flash flood warning for DeKalb.
DeKalb, Fulton, and Gwinnett County. A flash flood warning is in effect there now for DeKalb, Fulton, and also Gwinnett County. I need to take this off of this crawl really quick though. Hold on just a second. Y'all hang with me just a second, okay? And then should I call master? No, I don't want to run that. Um, hold on guys, I'll be with y'all just a second. I've got to do something here for the crawl. Um, stand by. they're saying rainfall amounts of three to four inches have fallen over this warned area today. So that's northwest DeKalb, southwestern Gwinnett, and of course Fulton County where we were covering flooded Peachtree Creek a little earlier. Yes. So flash flood warning until 3 a.m. So we have had some uh, impressive rainfall amounts, as Sam was just mentioning, and that is what is prompting some of those flash flood warnings uh, that we have in effect. Again, DeKalb County, Fulton County, and Gwinnett County uh, with the heavy rain and more heavy rain that's about to move through. Here's the line that we're watching right now. At this point, uh, the only severe weather that we have is up in northwest Georgia, and even that has diminished as it's moved up into um, Chattanooga. Um, and we have no thunderstorm warnings, no tornado warnings in effect uh, for this area, but this is the line of storms. This is round three, the end of round three uh, that we were talking about earlier uh, that is moving through uh, our area right now. Heavy rain stretching from Suchus down toward Tate and over into uh, the northern part of Bartow County uh, and, and to uh, Cherokee County, Bartow County. Also here through uh, parts of Paulding County down into Carroll County, that's where we have these strong storms heavy rain, lightning, gusty winds, but just under the threshold of being classified as severe weather. In fact, these storms in Fulton, Clayton, and DeKalb, uh, it is a what we call a significant weather advisory. That is the category just under a severe thunderstorm warning, uh, 40 to 50 mile an hour winds and penny sized hail. If we had a closer to 60 mile an hour winds and quarter size hail, that would be classified as a severe thunderstorm. So these um, are storms that are just below severe criteria, and we're really not seeing any rotation with these out there uh, right now uh, yet either. Uh, so we hope that this is weakening as they move over to the east. Just know that this evening uh, we're going to see these storms uh, that move through thunder and lightning. L let's take a look at the lightning count with this right now. I'm going to do this over the entire area of North Georgia down toward Macon. I'm not going to include that in Alabama because I just want to give you all an idea of what we see. Let me go up. Oh, hold on. Let me do this again. All right, there we go, That um, over toward Athens. So about 172 lightning strikes over all of North Georgia. Earlier, in just some individual severe thunderstorms, we had 600, 700 lightning strikes in a much smaller area uh, of some strong thunderstorms that came through. So 172 lightning strikes over all of North Georgia. Yes, that's impressive. But that just goes to show you that these storms are not as intense tonight as the ones that we had that came through earlier today. Really, round two today in the afternoon was the um, strongest part of the storm uh, that rolled through our area. But now we have this, these storms that are moving through, uh, coming in from the north and the west, showing signs of weakening just a little bit. Uh, Donna Milford says she just recorded some small hail uh, from Cobb County. Julia Ingram, how is uh, Temple looking? Uh, you've got some showers there now, but you're on the back edge of this, and um, we'll see some improving weather through the nighttime hours. Atlanta getting heavy rain right now. Uh, best job keeping us informed. Thank you. Kristen says it's scary and crazy. Uh, Holbrook says, what about Bremen, Georgia? You've got some storms there right now, but not classified as severe. Uh, someone's asking if it's done in Cedartown. You're on the back edge. It's going to be improving in Cedartown. Uh, let's see. Nicole Escobar, I'm so glad you worked so hard. Thank you. I'm glad we didn't get an alert. Um, I'm sorry, I can't. Jenny says, how much rain in Northern? I'm sorry, guys, this is moving through so quickly, I can't keep up with everybody's question. Jerry says, how's Jasper looking for the rest of the evening? Uh, you still gonna have some showers and storms moving through there, but improving overnight. Uh, Tammy's asking about Snellville. It's gonna be weaker by the time it gets to you late tonight, ending over, uh, around midnight or so. 
Uh, is the storm intensifying, someone's asking, in Atlanta? Uh, well, it's just still good, still strong, but it's not growing. It's not, um, uh, the storm as it comes in from the west is not growing anymore. Um, how long till it hits Cartersville? Uh, Cartersville already has some showers there. You're on the back edge now in Cartersville. Is it safe to go to bed at UGA, thankful for you at 11 Alive? So, um, yeah, I think it's safe to go to bed. You're just going to still hear some more rain coming through and thunder and lightning, but I don't think you'll see anything severe. Uh, Marty's asking a severe we weather event over for the night. Not quite yet. We still have the potential for some of these storms. See this line moving through here. These storms right now are just below severe criteria. Some of them have 40 to 50 mile an hour winds and dime size hail. If it had closer to 60 mile an hour winds and quarter size hail, that would be classified as severe. So this is just below severe criteria, but strong storms still moving through. We're going to be dealing with this just for the next little while here. Uh, up through 10, uh, 10 o'clock to midnight is when we'll see the back edge of this moving through Atlanta and then uh, to the west of us as you go um, um, to the late later night hours. It's going to be pushing to the east of us and getting out of here. Sandy says, raining, thundering, lightning, hail in Bowden right now. We see that there on radar. Thanks for that confirmation. Uh, Maggie says, thanks for keeping us safe. Talisha says, is Bowden clear now? Nope, you still have some storms over there in Bowden uh, with the rain and lightning. So guys, if y'all will look, look at your area. If you're familiar with where you are on the map, look at this. This is where those storms are. We've got storms over Atlanta. We have these storms stretching from Cherokee County through uh, Bartow County also down through uh, Paulding County and into Carroll County and uh, pushing on back into Alabama. They've already moved through Rome. You're on the back edge now. Things are gonna start improving for you. So this line keeps moving through. It's coming into Atlanta. It's about to move into Douglas, about to move into Cobb, about to move into North Fulton, uh, about to move into Forsyth County. So that's the area with this is going on. Someone says it's moving so fast. Um, moving so fast, I'm not sure you're seeing it. Yeah, I know, it is hard to see. How's it looking tonight for Jefferson and Jackson County? You've got some rain coming your way. Everybody has rain coming your way uh, with the potential of thunder and lightning, heavy rain. But at this point, these storms are just below severe criteria. The main threats that you're going to be dealing with in north and west Georgia, uh, possibly some uh, penny size or dime size hail. Uh, winds 40 to 50 miles an hour. As it moves to the east, I expect that hail size to be a little smaller and the wind threat to be a little lower. I don't think those winds will be as strong as it moves to the east. We're going to see these gradually weakening a little bit more as they continue moving over to the east. Now, we could see another severe thunderstorm warning pop out of this. I really think that the risk for another tornado warning uh, is going to be lower. Uh, with these storms now because we've been seeing that uh, weakening trend as it moves through. So this is another round of good heavy rain um, that's going to be moving through. There's a question, Brittany. I couldn't see that. Heather Foster, so the worst hasn't hit Coffee County yet. Nope, it's not over. Coffee County is well to the south. You still have some storms possible down there. Mary says, thank you, 11 Alive, for reporting you deserve a... <laughs> A drink, I think is what that says. You have done an outstanding job, Chris. I really appreciate that. Um, I have not checked my email yet, but I know that we have tons of complaints about me breaking into blind, is it blind spot? We had a tornado warning. It is our policy that we will break into programming for a tornado warning. Uh, and we were concerned that it would extend over into Harrelson County and Floyd County as it was coming in from Alabama. It was in a county that we are responsible for, Cleburne County. And um, we have a lot of emails that aren't real happy, and I haven't read them yet. I'm not going to read them until after the newscast tonight uh, because uh, it's not always good <laughs> um, to read those uh, before I go on the air. So I'll check those out later, but a lot of complaints about it. But we, we, we are doing it for the safety of our viewers here. Um, and, and, and anyway, I, I'm going to read those later. So when you guys say thank you, I really appreciate that. Um, and I'm glad that you're enjoying these um, Facebook Lives that I'm doing as well. I love serving people on these too. Uh, Mary says you do a great job. I appreciate that. Carolyn Rowland, I'm between Austell and Powder Springs. How much longer, tonight or morning? This is going to be ending within the next couple of hours for you in Austell. Uh, you'll be able to sleep fine tonight. The storms will be over. Once we get to the midnight hour, it's going to be on over to the east. Amanda says we have stayed in the bathroom most of the day due to this stuff. Amanda says something about Dawson County. 
You're trying to save lives from Jennifer. That's our point. Christian, you have a few days off. Bingo. I love that. Is the tornado still watch in effect until 10 p.m.? Yes, it is. Uh, so let me show you that tornado watch. It's in effect for uh, Metro Atlanta and North and West Georgia until 10. And I really think they'll hold on to this tornado watch until 10 o'clock. Uh, once we get to 10 o'clock, I think that tornado threat is gonna be much lower. And I, I, I do think they'll let this expire. But these are the counties still in the tornado watch uh, that is in effect until uh, 10 o'clock tonight. And then these storms move on off to the east and we'll have some better weather. Now we still have the potential for strong storms here. I'm really kind of, I'm wondering if they're going to issue any kind of watch or anything for West Central Georgia. Uh, that's where we have that potential for a few more storms to fire up here tonight. Nina says, I don't have cable, so this is the best way to find out what's going on. Andrew Bush, don't let them bother you. Rather than interrupt my show to tell me about a warning than not anything at all. What direction are the storms moving? They are moving to the east. Uh, the, the whole line is moving to the east. The individual storms within that line are pushing up kind of the north and east. Uh, your Lenny says, thanks for all the updates. Carmen Rexford, the people that think a TV show is more important than other people's safety are real winners. Um, Kathy Johnson is asking about Blue Ridge. Uh, so we still have some showers up around Blue Ridge. The severe weather threat for you is really low. Uh, just some good showers, some thunder and lightning there up in the Blue Ridge area. Uh, you're starting to be on the back edge a little bit. We have these storms. So see this line? We were kind of expecting this to kind of, uh, this scattered variety to become a little bit more of a line. And that's what we have right now with this heavy rain. I'm just gonna walk you through these areas right now. Let me zoom in. I'm gonna walk you through these areas and just kind of scan these storms. So there you see north, right there north of Helen, uh, heavy rain going through Suchus right here. This is pushing closer to Helen. It is also moving into the northern parts of Lumpkin County here, also into Dawson County right there too. So here's that line. It's got some thunder and lightning with it, pockets of heavy rain, but not classified as severe. Uh, you go down into Pickens County, there's Jasper, Georgia right now, heavy rain there. Northern part of Cherokee County, very heavy rain there. Into Bartow County there at Cartersville, heavy rain, thunder and lightning. So this line is kind of coming together. It uh, gets a little more intense as you move into Paulding County here. We've got more lightning right there. In the northern parts of Carroll County in Bremen. Uh, so for, uh, we have a crew in Carrollton, I hope they stayed there. Um, let me see if there's any hail with that right now. So we've got some good hail just north of I-20, about a half inch in diameter is what we're seeing there, maybe close to an inch where you see those darker blues that it's, it's at Bremen and right along I-20. So yeah, there's still some hail with this. Even though these aren't classified as severe, there are still some strong storms with this moving through. This is the last leg that goes through. There's Carrollton right here, more of that coming out of Alabama. This is gonna move into Heard County. There you see Roanoke right here in Alabama. There's Franklin right there, Heard County, Troop County, LaGrange. You're gonna see some more showers and storms uh, in, in the area. Shannon says it's foggy in the mountains, uh, real threat of tornadoes. Hey, did they move, um, Sam, did they move Chris Hopper? Because Carrollton's now getting some good stuff. Did he stay there? What did we say? I think he went on up to Polk County. Okay, well, they, they're getting it too. But Carol is getting really good stuff yeah, they are. right now. So this line did kind of come together. Everything kind of joined together with that. Yeah, I think he went up to find the down trees up there. Okay. So well, and he had, this came through there too. So hopefully he got, got that. Okay. So uh, we are trying to place, uh, we have to deal, of course, here in the Storm Tracker Center placement of our, um, of our crews um, as they go out to report on this, trying to keep them safe, but also have them in areas where they're able to uh, move around to actually you know, find some of the damage. We have a flood warning extended for Big Creek and Alpharetta. Um, we always, a lot of times when we have a lot of rain, we get some um, flood warnings issued there. But this is the last batch. This is the third, you guys mind if I sit down? This is the third um, bit, third wave that is moving through. That works fine if I sit down, yeah. Um, the third wave that's moving through um, uh, northern parts of uh, Heard County, there into Carroll County right here, uh, moving through Dallas. That's where we have the worst of the storms. Now, this lightning count, I'm thinking, has gone up a little bit. I'm just going to get this part here. So about 158 lightning strikes with that in the past 15 minutes. Let me widen back out and show you what we have for all of North Georgia, and there's a good cluster of lightning there between Lineville and uh, Alexander City that's about to move into Heard County and Troop County. I wouldn't be surprised maybe uh, if we get a severe thunderstorm warning out of that, but let me check the lightning 
out of this over in North Georgia. About 285 lightning strikes. You see Sam there uh, coming through. She's helping me track this and to keep up with that. Uh, 285 lightning strikes in the past 15 minutes now uh, with this whole line of storms that's moving through. Now watch what happens when I include the lightning data with that cluster of storms there between Alexander and Lineville. That brings it up to over 1,000. Uh, so this is the next area that we have to watch coming out of Alabama uh, that has, hold on just a second here, uh, a lot of thunder and lightning with it that is going to be impacting you folks in uh, LaGrange. See that right there? Now, let me do a lightning count just on that storm right there between Talladega, Alexander, Shiloh. 940 lightning strikes just right here around Shiloh. That keeps moving to the north and east. That'll move into Heard County and also Troop County in a little bit. So I want you folks down uh, south and west of Atlanta, be prepared as we'll have that heavy rain and thunder and lightning coming in uh, into the Troop County area. Let me put a track on that. This storm I'm thinking is going east, northeast, about 45 miles an hour. Now, those first times you see there are in Central Time, Milltown, and Roanoke. That's um, Central Time. But as it crosses over the line into Texas, Georgia, that'll be at 10.01, Hillcrest at 10.10, 10.21 in Hogansville. Uh, might be interesting to see if, we, if that lightning and everything holds together. Let's see what the hail looks like. If we can see, yeah, maybe when that comes in, we may have a severe thunderstorm warning for those counties as we get to the top of the 10 o'clock hour. So that's the next thing that we're, uh, we're going to be watching there. Go back to reflectivity. And there's the storm system moving through. This is that area that we were watching. And this is pretty much timing out with what we, what we showed earlier on our newscast tonight and what we showed in our other Facebook Live with our high-resolution rapid refresh future forecast track model uh, that shows those storms uh, moving through, kind of forming a line and moving into Atlanta. Uh, and that's what we're going to see uh, for the next hour or so. I'm thinking by midnight, this is going to be over to the east. We'll be able to sleep a lot better tonight. Mandy McCrary, McCary says, thanks for keeping us informed. Uh, Christy Fuller is asking about Harrelson County. Uh, you pretty much are on the back edge. There's some strong storms in Carrollton right now that are moving away. Harrelson right now is on the back edge. You might see a little bit of that in Carroll County move your way on the south end of the county. Pam Meredith says, it's raining in Bowden, Georgia like crazy. Yes, that's what we see on radar right there in West Georgia. Um, Brandy Jordan, you're officially my favorite person today. You are too kind. Uh, Amanda Hackett, the Weather Channel lied to me all day today. Mandy Wilson, the video froze up on me. We had light winds, but mainly heavy rain and lightning in Decula. We'll be getting more tonight. You've got some more coming your way, but this line, see this line, everybody? This line going through north and west Georgia, it's all moving east. Everybody's going to get some of that rain as it moves to the east, but I do think it's going to weaken as it continues on over to the east. Somebody's asking about Cobb. Yep, it's on your the way. It's coming into Madison as well. Sally, Janet says it's thunder and random rain in Canton. Jennifer says, thank you for keeping us informed and safe. Lori Jones uh, is asking about Canton. You've got some rain coming your way. Uh, Olivia says Temple is getting slammed. Mary Romanowski says big rain. Pam Smith is asking about Dahlonega. Yep, coming your way. There's Dahlonega. There's the rain. Boom. Going to move in. How about that? Um, we have a significant weather advisory for northwestern uh, Douglas County, Harrelson County, Carroll and Paulding County until 10 o'clock with winds with that storm at about 40 to 50 miles an hour and nickel size hail. So these storms, again, just below criteria to issue a, a warning. Somebody said that I look tired. Uh, I, I feel tired as well. I'm very excited about getting home. I slept in a hotel last night uh, in Midtown uh, because I wanted to be close by for this morning to get into work quickly and not have to fight traffic for uh, for the bridge stuff going on. I live in Gwinnett, so it usually would take me 30 minutes, but with the bridge stuff going on, it's been taking me an hour. And I knew if I had to rush into work this morning, which I did come in early, <coughs> excuse me, I didn't want to deal with traffic. So I stayed in a hotel last night. Didn't really sleep that well, though. Paul Cotton, Hiram is getting heavy rain. Uh, Kathy is asking about Winder. It's coming your way uh, with some heavy rain. Connie Hawkins, um, Let's see here. The number of people watching, the one on the right is the number of people watching. Yeah, we were above 1,000. Now we're just about 842. Christina says Calhoun is clearing out, and, and you're on the back edge of that now, so it's looking better for you. Uh, it's moving to South Hall. Yes, it's coming to Commerce. Yes, with some heavy rain. Hailing and Temple. Uh, let's see. Uh, someone's saying, I appreciate everything you've done today. I'm sorry I couldn't see your name. 
Virginia says, you look great, bless your heart. Thank you, everybody's uh, being really nice tonight. Christy Michelle, the roof is getting slammed in Dallas, that's in Paulding County, and that's right here with these storms. Look at that, they're closing in on the city right now, uh, moving in from the west. Okay, you see that in Dallas, uh, Carrollton getting slammed. We have the reports of Temple getting a lot of heavy rain. There's some lightning right there on the west side too. So that's where we have the heaviest activity uh, moving through right now <clears throat> with the thunder and lightning. 40 mile an hour winds there too and some hail. Let's look at the hail product. And you can see some of that hail out of Harrelson County, Northern Carroll County, and uh, on down through uh, parts of Carroll County too. And let me go back to reflectivity. So that's that line kind of coming together, moving over to the east, trying to weaken a little bit. Jamie K says thunder rolling into Houston now. Uh, for someone asking about Jackson County, the rain will be far, not far behind. Uh, Jolene uh, is asking about Lilburn. Yep. Everybody's got rain coming. Okay. It's clearing out in Northwest Georgia. Everybody who's asking about their specific city. Look, here's the rain covering North and West Georgia. It's moving this way. It's going to hit everybody. Uh, but it's weakening a little bit as it moves over to the east. So we're going to see uh, those showers and the severe weather threat um, diminishing a little bit more as it moves over to the east. Okay. So thank you guys so much. It's 930. Uh, Sam and I need to get everything kind of set up for the 10 o'clock show tonight. Be sure and watch WATL at 10. Uh, we will also be on 11 Alive News tonight at um, 11 o'clock, we'll have our team coverage there as well. Uh, so I really appreciate you guys tuning in tonight and helping me with reporting here and giving me some great information uh, from what you're seeing in your area. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, Jamie's asking if my wife and daughter made it home safe today. No, I told them to hold off. They were gonna fly back today, uh, but I told them to hold off. They changed their ticket, they're coming back tomorrow. So, um, uh, so things are, uh, so they're going to be coming back tomorrow. I didn't want them to get stuck at an airport down in Southwest Florida today. Uh, so they're coming back tomorrow. And I'm glad they, they didn't come in because they had the ground stop at Hartsfield. And I'm just glad they didn't try to come back in this today. So, okay. So I'm about to do a cut in on 11 Alive. So I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Sam and I are going to get everything ready for uh, these, uh, the uh, shows that we have tonight, I can't even talk anymore. The shows we have tonight at 10 on the ATL, 11 o'clock on 11 Alive News. So I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Thanks for all your questions, comments. I try to get to as many of those um, as I can. Be weather aware tonight, but just know that by midnight tonight, a lot of this is going to be over to the east of us and hopefully much calmer as we're trying to sleep tonight. So that's the latest that we have here from the 11 Alive Storm Tracker Center. Y'all have a great night.
in a backyard and narrowly missed the back of a house. I mean, just clipped a shingle and went down and fire crews responded to that. Uh, they were going to call out the power company to make sure everything was okay in the back, but amazingly very lucky for those folks and surprisingly not a lot of damage. Good news for them. We have seen police and fire out and about all evening in Floyd County uh, expecting damage, waiting for it. And again, some lines down, some trees down, but nothing major and they are thankful for that. Back to you. All right, Duffy, thank you. It has been an incredibly active day. Just amazing. 11 Alive's Chris Hopper continues our Storm Tracker team coverage tonight, and he is in Paulding County. Chris? Yeah, Jeff, we're in the city of Dallas right now in Paulding County on 278. We're actually sort of driving right into that last band of storms that Chris Holcomb was talking about. If we switch over to the bubble camp here, you'll see all that lightning in the foreground there. We're driving right into this storm here. It's a pretty heavy rain that's coming down currently, but that lightning is just nonstop in front of us. You'll see some of the headlights coming into the screen there that's blocking the view a bit, but if you look at the sky there, you will see that lightning that has just been continuous for quite some time now. Uh, we just left Polk County as well, where they had some heavy rains and winds from this band of storms that we're in right now just a short time ago there were a couple of trees down there one in the cedar uh, cedar town area another in the vincent mountain area so those were cleared out of the roadway pretty quickly by the fire department uh, right now as you mentioned we are in that last band of storms that chris holcomb and samantha moore were talking about you can see the lightning and the heavy rain that is coming down and we're going to continue to follow into this we'll have some updates a little bit later guys all right, Chris, and please drive safely as you are out and about in Dallas tonight. Now, they are still cleaning up from Monday's tornado, and residents in Carrollton were bracing for even more severe storms tonight. Here's Joe Henke's report. Well, we're in Carrollton tonight where storms rolled through right around uh, 6 o'clock or a few minutes after. We've since talked to Carrollton PD. They've received no emergency calls or damage reports after that storm. We did talk to a few people downtown here who watched the storm come through Carrollton. Here's what they had to say. It came through, and just the whole square went black pretty much the sky. Um, we got a little bit of sideways rain, but nothing else really hit us hard here. And the storm that came through today compared to Monday, I'm told Monday's storm was uh, much harsher out here, did some damage in the downtown area, nothing severe, but uh, I'm told today's storm uh, did not compare uh, to the strength of what passed through on Monday. We'll send it back to you. Joe Henke reporting from Carrollton. Thank you. And again, Carrollton is being hit pretty hard for the second time this week. This is video from Monday. Remember, an EF1 tornado ripped the roof off a fire station, Fire Station 22. That storm knocked several trees into homes, and a similar scene is playing out today. Closer to Atlanta, drivers do not seem to be having any problems dodging raindrops near the downtown connector as we take a look at uh, the pictures right now. We head over now to Ron Jones. He is live on the 17th Street Bridge. Ron? Yeah, it's not bad right now. We, we're not experiencing any rain. The wind is picking up a little bit. We're starting to see some flashes of light, but not very dangerous. But as you know, during these severe storms, especially here in downtown Atlanta, the big elephant in the room, so to speak, or on the roadway is the Interstate 85 collapse because not only are drivers having to deal with some street flooding out there, uh, but the severe weather as well and what that severe weather brings, but also increased traffic volume, making the slick roads even more dangerous and most of the folks we spoke with say they're doing what they can to avoid the congestion. I'm trying to stay away from all the major roads, anything that's overcrowded, all the traffic roads that just packed up. Actually, if it's too crazy, I really want to go on it. We just take back roads. I hate driving in traffic anyway. It gives me anxiety. And then when people can't drive and the rain's pouring down. Three most important things to do, of course, is to slow down, drive defensively, and try to avoid any type of standing water because it may look like you can push your way through some standing water, but before you know it, you're stranded. But once again, if you're driving in downtown Atlanta, we have not seen any major accidents. We did see a fender bender, but no major accidents so far.
All right, Ron, thank you from the 17th Street Bridge tonight. Fire crews had to rescue five City of Atlanta workers today. They were stranded on Peachtree Battle Creek. The workers were in that area. They were putting up barricades and warning residents that the creek is prone to flooding. And two of the vehicles were washed downstream, submerged. Officials say it didn't take long to get the workers out. And here's the good news. No one was injured. You can track the storm anytime. Download the free 11 Alive weather app. It features more than 30 real-time radars. Just search 11 Alive weather in the app store. Coming up, a violent crime spree continues, this time behind bars. New details tonight about what happened inside the jail after police arrested a man charged in a midtown shooting and stabbing. And as we're heading to break, the 11 Live Storm trackers are all over social media, sharing today's photos and videos of the severe weather. Olivia Webb posted this video from the University of Georgia, Georgia in Athens, I should say. She jokingly described the scene as having to swim through campus. That's severe. That's a lot of uh, water accumulating. It's a lot of the students at UGA posting on Twitter today expressing their disappointment that classes were not canceled. And this is video from Emily shared from her apartment in Midtown today. A huge flash of lightning. You are watching 11 Live over on the ATL TV. We'll continue to bring you any significant information you need to be safe and sound tonight. Download the 11 Alive app today so you're prepared. I grew up here and I've seen Metro Atlanta's economy grow, but our potential is unlimited. We have great colleges training our young people, but too many leave after they graduate. We still don't have enough of the jobs they're looking for. In Congress, I'll work with anyone to cut wasteful spending, increase our exports, and expand high-tech, biotech, and medical research. That's how we take our economy to the next level. I'm John Ossoff, and I approve this message. Don't miss the Hot Tub and Swim Spa Blowout Expo this weekend at the Cobb Galleria. Browse the largest display of hot tubs and swim spas in the region from six major brands at up to 50% off. That's the Hot Tub and Swim Spa Blowout Expo this weekend only at the Cobb Galleria. Visit SpaExpo.com. Why put another crossover on a road already filled with them? Why give it headlights like jewels? A body that feels sculpted. Why give it an interior where even the dash is cut and sewn by hand? It's simple. You can build a car or you can build a Cadillac. Join us for Spring's Best. Get this low mileage lease on this Cadillac XT5 from around $399 per month or purchase with 0% financing. The Scotty Antique Markets is this weekend. Join us at America's Favorite Treasure Hunt, 3500 Exhibit Booths at I-285 and Jonesboro Road. Go to scottyantiquemarkets.com for more information. It's the Scotty Antique Markets. This, this weekend, weekend, this weekend, this weekend. The Storm Tracker Sky Camera Network is brought to you by AquaGuard Foundation Solutions. When it comes to your foundation, we've got you covered. Call now, 770-744-1117. firing up across North Georgia this evening. And our chief meteorologist, Chris Holcomb, and I, I, I want to say right now, Chris, an amazing job today. I, I watched you morning, afternoon, into the evening. I don't know how you keep going so strong, but just terrific coverage for us well, and for everybody in the class. Sam uh, joined me as well. Chesley and Tracy were getting us through that first round of storms that came through this morning. I came in and joined them late this morning as Sam went out into Thunder Truck. It does take a whole team. And really, <laughs> you know, we, we say that the storm trackers here at 11 Alive, it's more than just Sam, Tracy, Chesley, and me. It is in our entire newsroom, and everybody has done a great job with all of our reporters that are out there tonight uh, in the, the damage areas and experience that range. So um, uh, really it takes the whole newsroom to, to get this going and it's an important mm -hmm. story to tell and we're still telling the story tonight as well as we have this line of storms. This is the last bit that's moving through. Let me show it to you on radar here and we have another new severe thunderstorm warning. This was just issued. Let me take you down to that right now uh, because this is brand new information that's just now coming in. Look at all the lightning and thunderstorm activity with this. Let me go to live mode and go to this warning because this was just issued for South Fulton County. Fayette County, Coweta County, and Carroll County. This just in now, brand new severe thunderstorm warning with this cell uh, that is coming out of Carroll County. Plenty of lightning with that. We have some hail with that. Winds 60 miles an hour or greater, and some of that hail is large. Also, this warning, we told you about this at the top of the newscast. Uh, it is a severe thunderstorm warning for folks in
in Coweta, Heard, and Troop County. That one's going to expire at 1045. So this is that line. Let me take you back out to the wide because this is the whole line that's moving through. Plenty of lightning in association with that. Uh, let me show you the whole lightning count for all of North Georgia out of that whole line. Over a thousand lightning strikes in the past 15 minutes. You saw Chris Hopper as he was in the thunder truck just a little while ago showing all of that lightning that was here over on the west side. It was almost constant there. More of that continuing to go through. I'm getting a lot of questions on Facebook and Twitter, social media, media people asking if these storms are going to be severe tonight. So far, the severe ones are on the south side, but they're still strong on the north side as they move through. So if you can hold off just a, a, a little while longer, I'm thinking by midnight, uh, this is all going to be off to the east and we'll see some uh, improving weather as the system continues to move on through. And as we widen out a little bit more, you see this is all a little bit of wraparound moisture on the backside that comes in tomorrow in the form of mainly just a few light showers that are going to move on through. Take a look at this. Sam is monitoring here. Check out that lightning. This is our, uh, our tower cam out at Cobb County at SunTrust Park. We are looking toward the west and that again, you just continue to see that lightning that's flashing there with the heavy rain uh, that is moving into our area. And so, Sam, we just have a little while longer mm -hmm. for this front to move through, but still there's that severe weather threat. And we have that extension of the tornado watch that the uh, National Weather Service and Storm Prediction Center just put out there. Right now until 2 a.m. for the southernmost counties that you see here on this map. So tornado watch until 2 a.m., except for Douglas Forsyth, Cobb, and Fulton counties. That runs until 11 p.m. So after about 11 p.m., we should start to things see things calm down at least in the northern part of the metro but those southern counties will still be under a tornado watch until 2 a.m then we can finally take that breather. But uh, we wanted to also touch on the flood watch, the flash flood watch that's in place here. And this is going to be through late tonight as we've seen uh, two to four inches commonly all across the area. And some spots have seen some five, six inches and those areas are being impacted. So isolated flooding, especially in those flood prone areas and hydroplaning on the roadways, especially with this latest round of heavy rain as those thunderstorms storms come uh, rolling in across the metro area and here are your uh, your flash flood warnings that are in place. Of course, that does include uh, the Peachtree Creek area where we were out there earlier and folks had to be uh, rescued by a swift water team. And, and Chris, it is so interesting to see just how quickly and frightening to see how powerful that water is and how fast moving it is. So thank goodness those folks were, were rescued out of their vehicles and everybody is safe tonight. But now we're all hunkering down as this line of severe storms moves through. And as folks are driving around tonight in the dark with this line of storms that are moving through the area. We want to remind people it's just not a trite phrase, but it's an easy one to remember. Turn around, don't drown. If you get into a situation where you see water covering the roadway, don't try to drive through it because you just don't know how deep that gets and it takes just a few inches of water to actually displace a car as it's driving, trying to drive through. Let's put this into future mode. You can see this line of storms moving through. Here we are at 1130 tonight, uh, just through the Atlanta area, pushing over to the east, still over parts of Hall, uh, Hall County, Gwinnett County, then uh, this is in Athens, past Athens by one o'clock. So hold off a little bit longer while this line of storms moves through. Then it's going to be easier for you to sleep tonight. Then we'll have just a few wraparound lighter showers that come in for the morning hours tomorrow. RPM pretty much confirms the same thing. All that rain moving out and then a couple of light showers mainly up to the north. Maybe even a couple of flurries mixing in in North Georgia as it is going to be windy and colder here tomorrow too. So here's that seven day outlook. Uh, just a chance of a couple of light showers mainly to the north tomorrow. Only up to 60 degrees for a high down to 40 Friday morning, only 59 for a high with mostly sunny skies. Saturday down to 39 to start with a high of 67. We're back to the 70s on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. A couple of more clouds mix in on Tuesday and Wednesday, but we're going with tens on the wasometer Sunday through Wednesday. Warming temperatures back to the 80s for the uh, 13th through the 16th. Uh, still a chance for some showers though in that 11 day look ahead too. So just a little bit longer with this last band of showers and storms moving through. You'll be able to sleep better tonight and then windy colder tomorrow, but then we're headed to a drier pattern. Chris, also one of my favorite anchors in Atlanta had some really great things to say about you on Facebook today. Johnny Beckman, who I, I do not know, I've never met, but I always enjoyed watching him, a weatherman for many years here. 
uh, talked about how great your coverage was. He, he said that he could not have done better than what you did today. That was the biggest compliment I think I've ever received, uh, despite Emmys and stuff like that. Johnny was my idol growing up. I worked with him here at 11 Alive for a few years before he retired and uh, kept in touch with him for years and getting that message today. Uh, after reading complaints about uh, interrupting days of our lives <laughs> and all that stuff from viewers, that just made my day to get that message from Johnny Beckman, my, my weather idol. Yeah, great stuff. I, I loved him on the air, too. Yeah. All right, Chris, thank you. The National Weather Service reported a possible tornado in Newton County this afternoon. Multiple houses were damaged uh, along a, a number of streets. Power lines also were knocked down in other areas. All right, new tonight, we have learned the violent one-man crime spree that horrified Atlanta earlier this week, including the shooting death of a lawyer, a woman on Peachtree Street, didn't stop in jail. The jailers told 11 Alive's John Shirick the suspect continued to endanger lives while they were booking him. He entered the Fulton County Jail intake section accused of a violent two-day crime spree. Raylan Browning, suspected of murdering attorney Trin Wynn on Peachtree Street on Monday and stabbing and nearly killing two men at an office building nearby the day before. Jailers say Browning immediately began endangering lives inside the jail. He attacked another individual. Assistant Jailer Lieutenant Colonel Derek Singleton says Browning was in this holding cell and suddenly jumped another inmate. According to the incident report, striking him four times with closed fist, causing lacerations to the face. Singleton says deputies struggled with Browning to subdue him. Once they got him and he was still combative, then they deployed their tasers, and he, he complied. But he says two hours later, Browning by himself attacked himself, biting his left arm until it bled. He was in a padded cell by himself, so staff uh, lined up. They went in, bum rushed him, um, got him down to the ground, subdued. They took Browning to Grady Hospital. He's back in the jail now, in solitary. Jailers have him on 24-hour watch to try to keep him from hurting himself or others so prosecutors can begin to seek justice for Trin Wynn and the others. Lieutenant Colonel Singleton can't remember another inmate booking quite as dangerous as he says this one turned out to be. It just was a situation that was not normal. At the Fulton County Jail, John Shirick, 11 Alive News. What a dramatic new chapter in this story. What a horrible story. Still ahead, all 18 candidates. There they are. There they are, vying for Tom Price's congressional seat. They're going head to head in a debate led by Mr. Jeff Hollinger. We have the highlights coming up. Download the 11 Alive app today so you're prepared. I'm Crash Clark. Atlanta Alive is changing, dedicating all of our coverage to help you deal with the I-85 collapse. Send in your questions on Facebook and Twitter with hashtag traffic trackers. All traffic, all the time, only on Atlanta Alive. Do you really know what happens with the clothes you donate to charity? We'll pick them up for free and the proceeds go to American Kidney Fund where 97 cents of every dollar goes to helping kidney patients. Call or click today. At Regions Bank, we offer the innovative tools you need to make banking simple so you can take your next step in life. Ashley, a real Regions customer, loves that we offer Regions mobile deposit and advanced online banking tools to help her keep track of her money. Sierra uses Android Pay and online planning tools that help her plan for the future. And they both love that there's a helpful Regions banker available to offer personal advice and guidance. Ready to take your next step? Regions Bank is right here in Atlanta. Call, click, or come by. I won the MVP back in 82. Mr. Murphy. Now, in 83. Mr. Murphy, I've really got to go to work. Ever since Braves Family started, we've been slammed. Hey, Braves fans. All season long, get two large five-topping or specialty pizzas, just $10 each, using code BRAVESFAMILY at PapaJohns.com. Yeah, I just ordered online. Tell the driver to bring a glove. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. Proud partner of the Atlanta Braves. Did you know kidney disease affects 31 million Americans? It's physically and financially devastating, but you can help by donating those old clothes you don't wear anymore. 
Call or click today and we'll pick them up for free. Hey, it's Crash Clark. The 85 collapse is impacting thousands. Download the 11 Live app now and let the traffic trackers guide right, you through this mess. With conditions changing every minute, get the alerts that help you find the best routes. The 11 Alive app. Tonight, all 18, 18 candidates in the race for District 6, they gathered for a debate. Have you ever seen a debate with 18 candidates gathered in one place? No to appear in front of television cameras. This crowded field of congressional hopefuls took the stage at downtown Atlanta's Georgia Pacific headquarters. They were all competing a wish, a hope, a dream, a desire to replace Tom Price. I moderated the debate where frontrunner Democrat John Ossoff was a target for both Republicans and Democrats, but the political newcomer spent much of the night focused on some bipartisanship. Let's be realistic. $4 million was not raised in 10, 20, $30 increments. He is being bankrolled by Nancy Pelosi and the liberal left. What we need in the 6th District is someone who is going to stand up and fight for the people of the 6th District. I'm proud that I have built uh, a diverse coalition that spans the political spectrum here in Georgia of folks who are interested in promoting the economic future of this community. In an exclusive 11 Alive News Survey USA poll, Ossoff got 43% among likely voters. He's followed by Karen Handel, who you heard from, with 15%, then Bob Gray, and 14%, and uh, with Dan Moody getting 7%. You can head to 11 Alive for extensive special coverage of the race for the 6th District. Coming up, we are continuing to track storms across Metro Atlanta this evening. A thank you to Casey and Lisa sent us these photos from Somerville capturing hail. That's in Chattooga County, just north of Rome. Again, the hail that could do some damage. We're following this story throughout the evening and into the morning if necessary. Download the 11 Alive app today so you're prepared. I'm John Ossoff, and I think Congress could be doing things a lot better. Both parties in Washington waste too much of your money. When I worked there, I helped expose waste and abuse by government contractors. We need stricter oversight and tougher penalties. They need to be held accountable. And there's $16 billion in duplicate programs. That can be cut. I approve this message because I'll work with anybody in Washington who respects your tax dollars. We know there's a lot of other cleaning companies to choose from. Not for me. I've tried those other guys. They just don't clean my home as good as these guys do. They even moved my furniture so my entire room gets clean. Our equipment cleans like no one else's. And our cleaning solution meets rigorous EPA Safer Choice standards with no harmful residue left behind. That's why I call. Call or visit StanleySteamer.com for local specials. Call 1-800-STEAMER. Stanley Steamer, just certified cleaner. My grind respectable my strength undeniable my spirit unbreakable on this road of life baby i was born to roll Scotty Antique Markets is this weekend. Join us at America's Favorite Treasure Hunt, 3500 Exhibit Booths at I-285 and Jonesboro Road. Go to ScottyAntiqueMarkets.com for more information. It's the Scotty Antique Markets. This, this weekend, weekend, this weekend, weekend this, this weekend. weekend. When you paint with frog tape, something magical happens because frog tape is the only painting tape with patented paint block technology to give you the cleanest sharpest lines possible the patented paint block reacts with water in latex paint to form a micro barrier against paint bleed frog tape delicate even works on freshly painted surfaces giving you maximum creative flexibility for professional results when you paint there is only one name to know frog tape keeps paint out keeps lines sharp don't miss the hot tub and swim spot blowout expo this weekend at the Top Galleria. Browse the largest display of hot tubs and swim spas in the region from six major brands at up to 50% off. That's the Hot Tub and Swim Spa Blowout Expo this weekend only at the Cobb Galleria. Visit spaexpo.com. 
starved for something new? Turn your love of food into a thriving career at the College of Continuing and Professional Education at KSU. Our culinary apprenticeship program provides unique classroom instruction along with the opportunity to apprentice under top chefs in Atlanta's finest restaurants and catering companies. This program is eligible for interest-free payment plans and VA education benefits. Success begins at ccpe.kennesaw.edu. I'm not sure if you can hear that because our mics are so close to yeah. us, but we can hear the heavy pounding of the rain right now. We're in Midtown around the corner from Ansley Mall, and this next round of storms is certainly hitting us right now. We are. It's, it, it sounds as though we're in Southeast Asia, and it's the rainy season. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I mean, it, it, is, it is really... It's intense. Yeah, it's intense right now. Yeah. So well, let's go straight to our chief meteorologist, Chris Holcomb, to tell us a little bit more about this system as it's moving through. And it is coming through right now. This is the line of storms. Samantha and I are busy tracking this storm as it moves through our area right now. And that heavy rain is right on top of us right now. I want to go over these warnings that we have right now. Then Sam's going to take a look at some of the hail uh, that is moving through. This is the uh, these are the latest warnings that we have here uh, that uh, are over just in the south of the city. Sam, this one right here, look at that. This is where we have these storms that are rolling through the main threats with this one a heavy rain uh, mm -hmm. wind also some hail with that this is a severe thunderstorm warning it'll be in effect until 11 o'clock for folks in Carroll County Coweta County Fayette and also Fulton County Sam I know you've also been watching this one on the south side here and this one is uh, about to move out this one's going to expire at 1045 so mm -hmm. this will be over in a few minutes for Coweta herd and troop but as we've been watching these come through we've had all kinds of weather with it right yeah all kinds I mean the lightning has just been incredible today if we did a lightning count from today, and I'm seeing it in the camera behind you, it's all over the place. We're hearing the thunder. Probably thousands of strikes today, wouldn't you say, if we can Definitely, tally up yeah. the day? In fact, this that we have going on right now, I want to do a count on that because all of this over North Georgia uh, is probably around 1,000. That's what we checked on just a second ago. If you look at that right there, well, it's now below that. But just a few minutes ago, we had lightning counts there that were uh, close to 1,000. Now, 719 strikes with this coming through uh, the area and we're also dealing with a little bit of hail with that here too right yeah the hail has been also uh, large we've had ping pong ball size hail this that is right now uh, moving right over uh, Roswell so uh, on up towards Milton pretty impressive the dark blue color that you see here that royal blue yeah. color uh, that's usually right around an inch and yes indeed it was 1.1 uh, inches so uh, definitely large enough to leave a mark on your car do some damage to your roof and of course any landscaping you may have recently put in may be pummeled by some of these larger hailstones. And there's more of that in South Cobb. Again, those blue colors indicating where we have hail the mm -hmm. size of an inch or more also here in South Fulton County. And then as you go down into that severe thunderstorm warning, both of these have some smaller hail. The main threats with these warnings right now, those very strong winds as this system continues moving on over uh, to the east. So I want to put the reflectivity back on and go back out so you can see what we have. This is the last band. This is that round three that is moving through the area right now. Let's take a look at the bigger picture right now, and you can see what we're talking about with the future radar. We're going to pick this up and uh, take you into the rest of the nighttime hours here. Once we get this through, you see there's nothing else really behind this, and except for a few light showers that we'll be dealing with for tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to ask Tyrone if uh, before we pitch back, I'm going to see if you can go to Arc 13. I'm seeing some big time lightning there in Coweta County. I might want you to take that full if you can get that in here. There it is right there. This is our live camera from Coweta County. Uh, we were just seeing some flashes of lightning there. You see right there uh, some intense lightning coming down with those storms uh, that are down in Coweta County where we have that severe thunderstorm warning in effect with heavy rain coming in there as well. So that's how it looks right now in Coweta County. Back to radar and you can see what we're talking about with the uh, uh, watch that's in effect. We mentioned earlier this watch was supposed to expire at 10 o'clock tonight, but it has expired. Uh, it's now going to be extended until 11 o'clock. You can see here for those counties uh, that we're watching around Metro Atlanta, it'll be in effect until 11. But then these counties on the south side are going to hold on till about 2 o'clock in the morning. So again, here is that, that loop as this moves on through. This is our future radar product. We just have to get this line of storms to move on over to the east by midnight. We will see that uh, over to the east of us. Still some heavier showers and storms uh, going through Hall County over to Banks County, Jefferson County, Clark County near Athens, and on the south side through Pike Lamar County, Upson County. 
moving on over to the east. Once we get past midnight, one o'clock in the morning, I do think this is going to be past Athens and moving on out of here, and then we'll have a better weather as we go through the rest of the overnight hours. So it's just this intense line of storms that we're going to be dealing with really for the next hour or so as they move over to the east. And then finally, uh, a break in the action with quieter weather here tomorrow, but it's going to turn windy and colder. We'll talk more about that coming up. Thank you. And thank you, Samantha. Floyd County has been hit with several bands of storms this evening, some of them pretty powerful. 11 Lives Duffy Dixon joins us now live. And Duffy, last time we spoke, you talked about the intense rain in Rome, the intense lightning, and the very strong thunder. Still the situation, or it looks a little more calm now? It is calmer now. The rain has moved out. The lightning is gone. We can't even see it in the distance. And as you said, these were bands that went through throughout the evening. We're going to show you some video of one of the strongest ones. It was almost nonstop lightning and thunder right overhead. This is in Rome, Georgia. This is the center of Floyd County. Uh, we are now in Cave Springs. We actually came over here to look for a possibility of some downed power lines. We did not see them. But here's your second piece of video. What we did find in Rome after one of those bands, the second to last one, uh, there was a call about a tree down in the back of a house. We got there right as the fire department did. Luckily, this tree fell with millimeters of hitting the entire house, just went into the backyard, just clipped a couple shingles off the roof. So that family not even losing power, but the fire department coming in to check it all out. Everyone around here saying they feel very lucky. These were very strong storms. As you know, Floyd County has uh, been hit hard in the past, and they are happy that they fared so well tonight. Back to you. All right, Duffy, thank you. Now, this rain coupled with the I-85 bridge collapse is making it much harder to get around. 11 Alive's Ron Jones now is showing us from the site of the collapse. Yeah, that's right, Jeff. And you made a Southeast Asia reference monsoon weather. What a difference 20 minutes make the last time that we spoke with you guys during the broadcast. It is coming down like buckets. We're starting to see flashes of light as well from lightning. And uh, talk about street flooding. This is, I guess you would consider this a little bit like a flash street flooding here. I would say this is about two to three inches of water now. When I first got out here, it really was not that bad at all. But within just five minutes, the water has increased, the rain has dropped, the water is rising along the streets as well. And uh, you mentioned the fact that we're over here by the Interstate 85 collapse. Of course, the police are here right now and workers are over there trying to do what they have to do. But what makes it difficult for motorists is not just the rising water, but this is a big issue as well that's affecting all of downtown Atlanta because it's increasing the volume of traffic, of course. You have the slick roads of severe weather making it very very dangerous for motorists out there. So the one thing I would point out, and if this officer were to come out of his cruiser, he'd probably tell motorists this as well. Slow down if you're driving through anywhere, anywhere in Metro Atlanta where there is street flooding or the possibility of street flooding, because it's really rising here. Also, because there's the danger of um, hydroplaning, losing control, maybe slamming into another vehicle or getting into a single vehicle accident as well. And if you run into any type of flooding out there, you could possibly, your vehicle could possibly stall. So once again, this Southeast Asian monsoon weather has struck right here, downtown Atlanta, midtown Atlanta, right next to the Interstate 85 collapse. Back to you guys in the studio. Ron, well done. Nice job. That's not easy out there. And yes, if it's Southeast Asia, we need to find you a rickshaw somewhere to get you out of that. All right. Thanks. Still ahead. <laughs> Pepsi reversing. There you go. Pepsi reversing their course tonight after an ad sparks one major backlash online. We're digging deeper into the debate that's coming up. And heading to break with more videos, more photos from you, the 11 Live Storm Trackers. This is from Watkinsville. The law office of Andy Carter shared this video on Facebook today. A lot of cars driving on what was a road and looks a little bit like a, a river today. Kate Pearson shared this video from Midtown. She says wow. it's just outside of her apartment. Oh my goodness. Sports is sponsored by Sonic. Game night is our daughter Allie's favorite night. And knowing that her favorite General Mills Big G cereals are gluten-free, like Honey Nut Cheerios, Rice Checks, and Lucky Charms, 
she can enjoy it her way. <laughs> Try new Very Berry Cheerios. The taste of real fruit in every bite. So very good. The Scotty Antique Markets is this weekend. Join us at America's Favorite Treasure Hunt, 3500 Exhibit Booths at I-285 and Jonesboro Road. Go to ScottyAntiqueMarkets.com for more information. It's the Scotty Antique Markets. This, this weekend, weekend, this weekend, weekend this, this weekend. weekend. Liberal extremists will stop at nothing to push their radical agenda. Now they're turning their attention to Georgia and demanding that you vote for John Ossoff for Congress. John Ossoff is one of them. Ossoff will vote with Nancy Pelosi for more spending, bigger government, and a weaker military. Don't let them hijack our congressional seat. Stop Ossoff now. Congressional Leadership Fund is responsible for the content of this advertising. In 2014, ISIS in Iraq kidnapped 5,000 women and girls as sex slaves. They were raped and tortured. Most people had no idea that this was going on. We had to do something about it. John Ossoff, a former national security aide and investigative filmmaker, organized a team to go to the front line and shine a light on ISIS sex slavery for everyone to see. The world needs to know what's happening to these women, and we have to put an end to it. I'm John Ossoff, and I approve this message. The go-to. Dress it up, dress it down. Wear it anywhere and look fabulous. The romantic. Designed to make you feel feminine and confident from every angle. The statement. A perfect look for every age, style, and occasion. Fashion for every day at prices for everyone. Now in sizes 2 to 28. Shop Cato and CatoFashions.com. Frugal kitchens and cabinets. Life happens here. Creating the perfect kitchen in just five days just got easier with Frugal Kitchens and Cabinets. I'm consumer investigator Dale Cardwell. Frugal Kitchens is proud to announce the grand opening of its fourth Atlanta location in Atworth. To celebrate, they're offering $2,000 off a complete renovation. Plus, visit your local Frugal showroom for a chance at even more savings. Frugal Kitchens and Cabinets, life happens here. I got a curb violation. B-13 in pursuit. Uh-oh. Honey, hurry. Oh, pardon me, ma'am. Excuse me. Sorry. Excuse me, sir. Sir. Hit the left gate! Pardon me. Pardon me. Excuse me. Excuse me, sir. Pardon me. Pardon me. Excuse me. Nice work. Oh. The 2017 Toyota RAV4. Get 0% APR for 72 months plus $500 bonus cash on a 2017 RAV4. Toyota. Let's go places. Don't miss the Hot Tub and Swim Spa Blowout Expo this weekend at the Cobb Galleria. Browse the largest display of hot tubs and swim spas in the region from six major brands at up to 50% off. That's the Hot Tub and Swim Spa Blowout Expo this weekend only at the Cobb Galleria. Visit SpaExpo.com. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers, along with meteorologist Samantha Moore. We've been busy tracking these storms moving through. This line that's moving through right now is intense. This is this third wave that we were telling you about over the past couple of days. The first wave came through this morning. Chesley and Tracy got you through that one. And then we had the second wave this afternoon. All of us were here this afternoon. Mm -hmm. Sam, you were in Thunder Truck tracking that one. We were here in the studio. And now this is the third wave coming through tonight with still some severe weather uh, that's moving through our area. So Sam, it's really been interesting to watch this. If people can hold on just a little bit longer, we're going to be okay. Right, and to those early morning hours, 2 a.m. is when that tornado watch will finally expire. So we have a few more hours ahead. And it's interesting because the third wave was probably the most difficult to figure out exactly how intense these storms would be. And it was really a broken line as it was coming in from Alabama. But totally. then that line really got together and has mm -hmm. formed and moved through. And we do have a few severe thunderstorm warnings here on the south side uh, that we are watching now. I want to put this into live mode uh, and then go back here to see you can see these warnings that we're watching here south of I-20. We have this one here for northern Coweta County, South Fulton County, parts of Fayette County with this line of strong storms moving through here. It stretches down through Heard County and also Meriwether County. You are in this a, a severe thunderstorm warning as well. And then as you go down closer to the Columbus area back into Alabama, more intense lightning, rain and hail uh, moving through these areas too. But this stretches up to the north side. We
we don't have any severe thunderstorm warnings in effect here on the north side, but this is still uh, very impressive with plenty of lightning in association with this too. I want to widen back out because I want to show you the lightning count out of this entire line uh, that's through Georgia right now, and that has uh, just under 1,000 lightning strikes just in the past 15 minutes, 993 lightning strikes just in the past 15 minutes. So this is going to keep moving on to the east. We are in the worst of this right now, and it's going to move on over to the east. And as it does, we will finally see some improvements as we go through the rest of the evening hours tonight. So if you guys can just hold on for just a little bit longer, this is going to continue uh, pushing on out of our area. So Sam, that's going to be the trick tonight to watch this get out of here so we can finally rest easy. Yeah, and we were just looking at some lightning stats across the southeast in the past two hours, over 12,000 strikes. That's how much energy is contained in this storm. So we're seeing that push off to the east and it has left behind a lot of water. In fact, as we take a look at the rainfall estimates that we queried off a of Doppler radar, uh, we've had some really amazing amounts here along I-20 over five and a, uh, five inches, almost five and a half uh, near Palmetto over six inches of rain just today alone over three and a half inches here in the Atlanta area. So because of this, we are seeing some runoff and we're seeing some issues and with a little bit more rain coming in yet tonight, we do have this flash flood watch that's in effect uh, through late tonight here across all the counties that you see draped in green and overall we've had two to four inches but as you just saw some spots have seen even more than that so as these cells move through if you're going to be out at all you'll probably want to slow it down because hydroplaning is going to be an issue with standing water on the roadways and then we have our flood mornings as well here uh, we were out at Peachtree Creek earlier there was a, 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 re, a swift water rescue it's easy for me to say this late at night a swift water rescue as some workers who were trying to barricade the creek to keep people out actually got stranded in the water themselves and had to be rescued from their vehicles. So we need to take it seriously. It is getting dark, Chris. So anybody who is out, if you come through a flooded roadway, it's best just to find a way around it. You don't want to drive into that. You just can't tell how swiftly it's moving. Yeah, we don't need any more rescues out there tonight from some of these flooded areas here. Now we still have the tornado watch in effect. We mentioned this a little bit earlier. It was supposed to expire at 10, but they extended it for Metro Atlanta until 11 o'clock. These counties in Metro Atlanta will be in this until 11 o'clock and then areas to the south will be in this uh, tornado watch until 2 o'clock in the morning. They're going to as the storm system moves over to the east, they're going to start taking some of those counties out of the watch as the threat diminishes with this line moving east. So there's that heavy rain over us at 11 o'clock and then by 1230. Look how it's already well off to the east. Still some showers and storms over in the Athens area, uh, stretching down toward parts of Pike and Lamar counties as well. And then finally out of here during the evening. Now, uh, the storm threat ends late tonight and early in the morning, but then we still will have a chance for a little bit of wraparound moisture coming in with some cold air and wind, uh, and that's just a few light showers, mainly over North Georgia uh, during the day tomorrow. So that's going to be the threat for showers tomorrow. Light stuff, not much here in the Atlanta area, but it is going to get colder here with that wind whipping up. We're going to talk a little bit more about that coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you very much to both Chris and Samantha who have been walking, working since sunup this morning. It's very important. It is severe weather system. Yeah. Uh, we have video of a possible of a possible tornado in Weston, Georgia. And if you wonder where Weston is, it's about two hours south of Atlanta. The storm damaged several structures. It destroyed a mobile home too. Uh, many trees are down. They're blocking roads. There's a lot of debris scattered everywhere. So when we gathered down here, it was really bad because the top on the home house started uh, peeling off. So we knew it was a very serious storm. Now we expect the National Weather Service to be out there tomorrow surveying the damage to confirm whether this was in fact a tornado. Lightning sparked several house fires today in Gwinnett County, including one at this home in Lilburn. The people living there say they smelled smoke. They saw flames shooting from the attic. Three people inside, including a 90-year-old woman, got out quickly, safely. They joked they've never seen the 90-year-old move that fast. It's good that they're able to joke right. after something this severe. But they are mourning their home of some 20 years. Lightning is responsible for multiple house fires around Metro Atlanta. When a bolt of lightning caused a tree to come crashing down, this Forsyth family inside was certainly caught off guard. I smell some kind of smoke, but I didn't know where it was coming from. Then I just walked out the window and then boom, I saw fire all over the place. 
How about that kid? What a sweet little boy. Yeah. I'm glad he's safe. The lightning bolt drew a straight line all the way down to the ground, then jumped to the house, damaging about 40% of that home. People who live in Albany are also picking up the pieces after being hit hard this week. I'll tell you what, they had a tough time over the last four months, my yes. goodness. This is video of a possible tornado in Cordille. That is just up the road. This video was captured by the chief of police, Rob Rodriguez. That is a nasty storm system. You may remember the deadly tornado that hit Albany in January. The devastation inspired the campaign Help GA, which raised thousands of dollars for the victims. So far, at least 15 people in Georgia have died this year because of tornadoes. You have to remain ever vigilant. Clayton County detectives are trying to determine how a man died after his body was found by county employees. The Clayton County Water Authority found this body when they came out to check a drain. The medical examiner is conducting an autopsy to find out how the man passed away. Anyone with information is asked to please contact Crime Stoppers Atlanta. The Hall County Sheriff's Office is trying to find a man who robbed a bank on Cleveland Highway this morning. The bank tellers say the suspect passed a note demanding money and flashed a gun. He then fled in a white pickup truck with an undisclosed amount of money. Anyone with information is asked to please call the Sheriff's Office. A soda ad sparking a big backlash on social media today. Pepsi has now pulled the commercial which features a reality television star after critics claimed it was really in bad taste. It trivialized the Black Lives Matter movement. NBC's Gabe Gutierrez explains. Tonight, Pepsi is in damage control after being accused of exploiting racial protests to sell soda. The two and a half minute ad released Tuesday on YouTube features model and reality TV star Kendall Jenner happily joining a group of young protesters. It never specifically references the Black Lives Matter movement, but many critics noted the stark contrast between the image of Jenner handing a soft drink to an officer and pictures like this one of riot police detaining a woman in Baton Rouge last summer. This ad trivializes the urgency of the issues and it diminishes the seriousness and the gravity of why we got into the street in the first place. On social media, the video quickly drew widespread anger and ridicule. Even Martin Luther King Jr.'s daughter, Bernice, sarcastically tweeted, if only her father had known about the power of Pepsi. I've never seen an ad get this negative response so quickly, and I think that it will make Pepsi reevaluate what they're doing with their brand. Today, Pepsi yanked the ad, saying the company was trying to project a global message of unity, peace, and understanding. Clearly, we missed the mark, and we apologize. Like Decades ago, this iconic Coke commercial during the flower power movement struck the right tone at the right time. As Pepsi found out, times have changed. Gabe Gutierrez, NBC News, Miami. Rain, bands are still moving across Metro Atlanta. Meteorologist Chris Holcomb and Samantha Moore are standing by with more on how this will impact you not only tonight, but as you're heading to work and school in the morning. Download the 11 Alive app today so you're prepared. Get through the I-85 mess with the most experienced traffic tracker in Atlanta. I'm Crash Clark. Atlanta Alive is changing, dedicating all of our coverage to help you deal with the I-85 collapse. Our team will be solely committed to helping you through this. Send in your questions on Facebook and Twitter with hashtag traffic trackers, and I'll answer them live so you can stay ahead of the traffic. It's going to be messy, but together we'll get through it. All traffic, all the time, only on Atlanta Live. Alarm off. Let's go. Quick to start and slow to quit. You've made a life. Sometimes messy, always remarkable. You wouldn't change a thing. So you keep going. Mother, daughter, teacher, and friend. America was built because women like you have the courage to get out of bed in the morning. When the lights are out and the work is done, we'll be there for you. You can count on it. The original mattress factory. Get a good night's sleep. You've earned it. You really think you the guy. You really do. Yeah, 27 red. Whatever, dude. Oh, yeah, I gave you that number. No, man, bro. We're going to go eat. Okay, listen up. This is big, as in big time, big fun, big deal. It's spring break at Six Flags, a big party with big thrills, like Goliath and the new Extreme BMX Stunt Show. And big news, plummet 100 stories straight down on the new Drop of Doom VR Freefall Ride. Want to be a big shot? Save up to 60% when you buy a four-pack of passes with a free parking pass and free whitewater passes. Don't miss spring break, April 1st through the 9th.
Go big, go Six Flags. Turn around. Every now and then I get a little bit hungry and there's nothing really good around. Turn around. Every now and then I get a little bit tired of living off the taste of the air. Turn around. Each with 150 calories or less, try our chocolatey brownies, tangy lemon bars, and creamy cheesecakes. Fiber One. Go on. Have one. It's Macy's Spring Mattress Sale. Get the lowest prices of the season from Sealy, Serta, Beautyrest, and more with queen mattress sets starting at $297. Plus, get special financing on a mattress purchase of $499 or more on your Macy's card. At Honda, we're proud of our heritage. Like with the Civic, it's stylish. And fast! With great performance and handling, all things we learned building engines like this! So hurry in to the Honda Dream Garage sales event. Get a great deal on the 2017 Civic, a KBB.com overall best buy for 2017 at your Honda dealer. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Life Storm Trackers. We're watching this last band of strong storms that are moving through the area right now, stretching from Gwinnett County, Hall County, intense lightning there in Gwinnett County, moving through the Atlanta area. We still have severe thunderstorm warnings down on the south side. A couple of these will be expiring soon. Uh, this one in Coweta County and South Fulton, but still strong as it moves into Fayette County, Clayton and Henry. More of these from LaGrange and Meriwether County right now, moving into Pike and also uh, Lamar County too. Sam and I are going to continue tracking these. We'll have much more for you as we continue our coverage on 11 Alive News at 11. Internet speeds 20 times faster. AT&T Fiber sounds amazing. Wait a sec, I'm not done yet. Less than 12% of AT&T homes actually qualify. Huh. Hold on. Everyone else gets our other slower internet speeds, but no one reads this stuff anyway, except for the old guy with the binoculars. Huh. Don't be fooled by AT&T. Xfinity delivers the fastest speeds to the most homes. Sign up today or get started with this great offer. Call, click, or visit an Xfinity store today. The Scotty Antique Markets is this weekend. Join us at America's Favorite Treasure Hunt, 3500 Exhibit Booths at I-285 and Jonesboro Road. Go to ScottyAntiqueMarkets.com for more information. It's the Scotty Antique Markets. This, this weekend, weekend, this weekend, weekend this, this weekend. weekend. Something this good just has to be shared. Finally, this is what you've been looking for. I'm talking about Quest. It's the best place to meet real people and make instant connections. And it's so fun to relax and just be myself. And the best part, it's free to try. Just pick up your phone and call. You should call Quest now. Try it free, 678-222-2222. Sparkle paper towels are great for wiping up fingerprints without wiping out your savings. Just right for cleaning up jelly, water, and security camera lenses. Just right clean, just right price. Sparkle, just right. 24 meals under $4, just like in 1934. $4 was a lot in those days. That can't be right. Oh, I was there. Back then, you not only got to choose from 24 meals under $4, you also got a shave, a shoe shine, and a new suit. Used to be called Steak and Shake and Shave and Shoe Shine and Suit. They even put it on the sign. Till it broke. Is that a Steak and Shake suit? Walter, did this look like a Steak and Shake suit? Get 24 meals for under $4, only at Steak and Shake. <laughs> Come on, you can do it. Dogs just won't quit. Neither does Frontline. That's why there's Frontline Gold. With its easy applicator, Frontline Gold delivers powerful protection that doesn't quit for a full 30 days. Its triple action formula is relentless at killing fleas and ticks. Frontline Gold, the latest innovation from the maker of Frontline Plus. For persistent protection you can trust. Good boy. Go for the gold. Frontline Gold, available at your vet. My grind, respectable. My strength, undeniable. 
my spirit, unbreakable. On this road of life, baby, I was born to roll. This program contains material that may be disturbing to some audience members. Viewer discretion is advised. Today, an urban assassin unleashes a maelstrom of violence on a peaceful march for justice in the heart of Dallas, Texas. He expressed killing white people. He expressed killing white officers. Before it's over, local and federal authorities will face a standoff that holds an entire nation breathless. Negotiations broke down. We had an exchange of gunfire with the suspect. With all eyes on Dallas, the chief of police must make an unprecedented decision in a situation that becomes a nightmare for law enforcement officers. It's July 7th, 2016, on a warm summer night in Texas. A crowd of over 800 peaceful protesters and 200 police on hand to protect them walk the streets of Dallas. I love Texas. Texas got to stand up. We can't come together just when there's a killer. In the days before this organized protest, two controversial police arrests in Louisiana and Minnesota have resulted in the deaths of African American suspects. The atmosphere is highly charged for this event in Dallas. Reporters turn out in large numbers to cover the scene as the march makes its way through the very streets where President John F. Kennedy was assassinated years before. With racial tensions running high, at least 30 open carry gun rights activists joined the march as well, and they're carrying rifles, wearing gas masks, bulletproof vests, and sporting military-style fatigues. But in spite of all the press coverage and the concerns of possible riots, on this night, the protest march begins peacefully, just after 7 p.m. in the Bellow Garden Park, right off of Main Street in downtown Dallas. Dallas PD even posted photos on their Twitter feeds of their own officers standing among the protesters. An hour into the protest, police post an online video of the civil crowd as demonstrators make their way down Commerce Street. At 8.45 p.m., the Dallas Police Department posts yet another video of the peaceful marchers. And then at about 9 p.m., a police dispatcher issues a radio alert to all available officers in the area that shots have been fired. Crowds of protesters begin running for cover as shots ring out in the streets. Officers can be heard yelling out, active shooter, outside of the eight-story El Central Community College building. Minutes earlier, ex-Army soldier Micah Xavier Johnson pulls his mother's black SUV up in front of the community college campus. He puts the parking flashers on as the protest marchers and police officers head his way. Then, he steps out of his vehicle. According to reports from eyewitnesses at the scene, when he gets out of the car, Johnson is clad in military garb and he's wearing protective body armor. He goes right up to several police officers and starts a conversation. The dialogue is very short. After just a matter of moments, he pulls out his weapons and he opens fire on as many police officers as he can. It's the beginning of the most deadly single domestic assault on law enforcement since 9-11. Police are taking fire at very close range, and they're being hit even as a number of them try to protect the innocent bystanders out in front of the college. In this opening round of shooting, Johnson is heavily protected with military-grade body armor, and he has two handguns and an assault rifle in his possession. With all that firepower, he kills three police officers on the spot. He injures two others, and he wounds two bystanders. At 9.40 p.m., police issue a warning to all citizens to stay away from downtown Dallas. They announce that multiple officers are reported down, and they don't yet know how many suspects may be involved in the shootings. Because of how close the buildings are to each other in this part of Dallas, the sounds of the initial gunshots are echoing back and forth at street level. And with the number of protesters carrying rifles in the crowd, it's impossible for police to tell exactly where the shots are coming from or how many active shooters are involved. 
In the El Centro College building where the assault begins, at least 60 students and faculty are still inside the eight-story structure. So the campus police immediately go on high alert to protect to the east and it's also weakening as it moves over to the east as well. Once we get into tomorrow, we have some other changes moving in. We're talking the wind kicking up with the wind advisory in effect that could have some impacts on some trees and the very saturated ground when we have some of those stronger winds tomorrow and that wind bringing in colder air. You're going to want to see some of these temperatures that we are going to be talking about heading into the weekend and we'll have that coming up. All right, Chris, Midtown Atlanta tonight has been getting slammed. Within the last 30 minutes, heavy rain started pouring down near the I-85 bridge collapse, flooding the road. 11 Alive's Ron Jones has been out there, and he joins us now. Ron? Yeah, you know, it's eased up a little bit. The last time that I talked to you over on the WATL, I think it was around... 1045 or so it was really coming down in buckets but it has eased up but what has not eased up is the light show above my head because we still see, see flashes of light we hear the thunder as well but the concern here is the street flooding uh, the last time that I spoke with you it was like two to three inches of rain making its way down Peachtree or down a uh, Piedmont Road and it's pretty deep if you walk in certain parts uh, of this street in the sidewalk you see lots of water here but you also see lots of traffic. So if you mix the severe weather, you mix the street flooding, you mix the slick roads together, it can make for dangerous travel. And the one thing that we've noticed, not too far from where I'm standing, that the water had built up so much, maybe two to three inches, that folks didn't know how deep it was and they were just flying through the water. Now, we had an opportunity to speak with a couple of uh, motorists out there and they say not only are they concerned about the severe weather, they're concerned about Interstate 85, but the congestion as well. I'm trying to stay away from all the major roads, anything that's overcrowded, all the traffic roads that just packed up. Actually, if it's too crazy, I really want to go on it. We just take back roads. I hate driving in traffic anyway. It gives me anxiety. And then when people can't drive and the rain's pouring down. Yeah, you know, all you have to do when you're driving in the rain, all of us need to remember this, is just slow down when you're in the rain, drive defensively, and Samantha Moore, meteorologist Samantha Moore, pointed this out, that if you see standing water, sometimes you just don't know how deep it is. It's better to slow down, or if you can avoid it, try to avoid it all together, guys. A big thank you, and thank you so much for sharing the story outside in the elements getting drenched. And uh, thank you oh, as well to yeah, the sure. photojournalist you're working with tonight, Pete. Floyd County has been hit with several bands of storms tonight, some of them pretty darn powerful. 11 Lives Duffy Dixon joins us. She has endured the rain, the lightning, and really intense thunder. <laughs> Well, and now we've got intense wind. I think Chris just talked about it. This colder air, we can feel it. It is much windier than ever than we've been talking to this evening. So clearly this whole thing is blowing in. Now, earlier tonight, yes, intense rain, uh, intense thunder, and the lightning. Take a look. This was just rolling our cameras for a short amount of time in one area one strike after another after another quite the light show uh, we also did have a few reports of trees down the only significant one and this was even minor was a tree that came down in someone's backyard narrowly missing the home they are grateful tonight those homeowners are and i talked to a few floyd county residents who say they are happy to be spared this is an area that traditionally does get hit by storms when they roll in from the same pattern then they feel pretty lucky tonight that there were no worse damage areas or anyone was injured nothing like that they are happy the rain and the wind is here or the rain is gone the wind is here they're ready to go to bed tonight back to you all right, Duffy, for those of you who have not lived in Atlanta or the South very long, April is that kind of month around here. You want to make sure that all of your uh, devices are charged and you have a flashlight nearby. Duffy, thanks again. 11 Alive's Chris Hopper continues. Our Storm Tracker team coverage tonight live in Cobb County. He's near Riverside Parkway and I-20. Chris, what are the conditions like right now? Hey Jeff, so the storm itself has passed us by. We started following it in Polk County around nine o'clock this evening. We follow it, followed it into Paulding County and here 
to Riverside Parkway in Cobb County just off of I-20 when we stopped to talk to you. The storm is moving quickly, so it has passed us by a good bit. But if we tilt the camera up and look at the sky there, you'll see the lightning flashes intermittently here. It's really an incredible view when it does go off. You see the skyline of the city in the background, and then you're also seeing that lightning illuminate the sky. It's really a great view. But as I mentioned, we saw uh, that storm from a few different angles tonight, that last band that went through. Uh, it was intense rain at times, heavy rain, a little bit of wind, but mostly it's been this uh, lightning show throughout the evening that's been pretty nonstop for the last couple of hours. This band certainly seemed to be a little bit weaker from our perspective in Polk and Paulding and here in Cobb County than what we saw early this morning and late this afternoon. Uh, good news is it looks like it is wrapping up for the night, though, and people are certainly going to be happy about that. Guys, back to you. All right, Chris in Cobb County, thank you. Fire crews had to rescue five city of Atlanta workers stranded in Peachtree Battle Creek. The workers were in the area to put up barricades and warn residents that the creek is prone to flooding. Two vehicles then washed downstream. Officials say it did not take long to get the workers out, and thankfully, nobody was hurt because they moved so quick. Lightning sparked several house fires today in Gwinnett County, including one at this home in Lilburn. The people there smelled smoke, they say. Then they saw the flames shooting from the attic. Three people, including a 90-year-old woman, all got out safely. They are, however, mourning their home of 20 years, but they are just delighted that everyone's okay. A reminder, you can track the storms all night, any night, with the 11 Alive weather app. It features more than 30 real-time radars. I've been glued to it today. Yeah, I've been glued to it too. today more than I have in the past, too. Yeah, it's, it's very, really great. very helpful. Just search 11 Alive in the App Store. Coming up, a violent crime spree now continues in jail. New details tonight about what happened at the jail after a man was arrested in Midtown in connection with that shooting and a pair of stabbings. Heading to break, the 11 Live Storm Trackers are posting what they've captured today on social media, photos and videos of the severe weather. This is Olivia Webb that posted this from Georgia's campus. Wow. She jokingly described the scene as having to swim around her campus. And check out this video that Emily shared from her apartment in Midtown today. A lot of lightning, a lot of rain and a big time storm that has certainly impacted the lives of so many in North Georgia today. You sent me to Washington as an outsider to help fix a broken system. With a new president who isn't afraid to shake things up, we finally have a real chance. Trust me, we don't need another career politician up here. Dan Moody cares more about getting results than getting credit. That's so uncommon and exactly what we need. Dan's one of us. I'm Dan Moody, and I approve this message. I know that we're both nervous. My little angel is having surgery, and worrying is just what a mom does. Your Majesty. Is he ready to go for a ride? I know that even simple procedures can be serious. That's why I chose to have your surgery at Children's, because I know you deserve the best care available. No other pediatric hospital in the country performs more surgeries than Children's Healthcare of Atlanta. Mom's not. Ah, spring is finally here. Time to find the perfect Honda to take your family out on the open road. Whether that's in the Accord or the Odyssey with an available built-in Honda back. So hurry in to the Honda Dream Garage sales event. Test drive the Odyssey or the Accord, the best-selling vehicles in their class. Where Zaxby's is from, flavor comes first. And flavor always makes room for seconds. It's come as you are food with clean your plate flavor. That's the flavor we were raised on. And that's the food we'd love to eat. Like the Zaxby's Cobb salad. Mouth-watering grilled chicken, Roma tomatoes, bacon, cucumbers, egg, fried onions, and cheddar and jack cheeses served atop mixed greens for a salad that puts flavor first. Okay, right. good. Yep, loosen it up a little. There you go. Okay. You got this. All right, let's do it. One, two, three. Nice. <laughs> Really good. I told you they're good. I know, right? Really I like good. it. Get the most from your tax refund this season because for a limited time, we're offering impressive savings on our most popular procedures. 
Download the 11 Alive app today so you're prepared. New tonight, we have learned the violent one-man crime spree that horrified Atlanta earlier this week, including the shooting death of a lawyer. A woman on Peachtree Street didn't stop in jail. The jailers told 11 Alive's John Shirick the suspect continued to endanger lives while they were booking him. He entered the Fulton County Jail intake section accused of a violent two-day crime spree. Raylan Browning, suspected of murdering attorney Trin Nguyen on Peachtree Street on Monday and stabbing and nearly killing two men at an office building nearby the day before. Jailers say Browning immediately began endangering lives inside the jail. He attacked another individual. Assistant Jailer Lieutenant Colonel Derek Singleton says Browning was in this holding cell and suddenly jumped another inmate. According to the incident report, striking him four times with with closed fist causing lacerations to the face. Singleton says deputies struggled with Browning to subdue him. Once they got him and he was still combative, then they deployed their tasers and he, he complied. But he says two hours later, Browning by himself attacked himself, biting his left arm until it bled. He was in a padded cell by himself, so staff uh, lined up. They went in, bum rushed him, um, got him down to the ground, subdued. They took Browning to Grady Hospital. He's back in the jail now, in solitary. Jailers have him on 24-hour watch to try to keep him from hurting himself or others so prosecutors can begin to seek justice for Trin Nguyen and the others. Lieutenant Colonel Singleton can't remember another inmate booking quite as dangerous as he says this one turned out to be. It just was a situation that was not normal. At the Fulton County Jail, John Shirick, 11 Alive News. Let's get back to our severe weather coverage tonight and talk about the residents that are still cleaning up after Monday's tornado in Carrollton and then they were bracing for more severe weather this evening. Joe Henke was in that area as the second round passed through tonight. Well, we're in Carrollton tonight where storms rolled through right around uh, six o'clock or a few minutes after we've since talked to Carrollton PD. They've received no emergency calls or damage reports after that storm. We did talk to a few people downtown here who watched the storm come through Carrollton. Here's what they had to say. If it came through and just the whole square went black pretty much the sky. Um, we got a little bit of sideways rain, but nothing else really hit us hard here. And the storm that came through today compared to Monday, I'm told Monday's storm was uh, much harsher out here, did some damage in the downtown area, nothing severe, but uh, I'm told today's storm uh, did not compare uh, to the strength of what passed through on Monday. We'll send it back to you. Carrollton is really being hit hard for the second time this week. This is video from Monday. And you can watch right now as an EF1 tornado ripped the roof off of the fire station 22. That storm knocked several trees into homes. And yes, a similar scene unfortunately played out again today. Tracking those storms again as they have been firing up throughout the morning, the midday, the evening in North Georgia. I'm hoping it's dissipating. Yeah, we all hope that. Our chief meteorologist Chris Holcomb has been the hardest working man in broadcasting today. Every time I I look at Facebook, I look at social media, I look at TV, I see you and I see a very active Doppler behind you. And it's been a very active day and we had those three waves. Melissa, as you just said, morning, afternoon and now nighttime. This is the third wave that's moving through. We're not hearing the heavy rain, rain on our roof right now as this line has moved now just to the east of Atlanta. But you folks over on the east side and also south and uh, south of the city still dealing with some of these heavier showers and storms that are moving through. You saw the crawl scrolling at the bottom of your screen. This is a brand new severe thunderstorm warning that we have north and east of the city here. here Here's Atlanta. As you move to the north and east of this, we have this severe thunderstorm warning that is in effect now uh, for Hall County, also into parts of Barrow County, Jackson County, over into Banks County, over also into the Oglethorpe County as well, northern parts of Clark County. With this storm that's moving through, we have some intense lightning in association with this. I'm going to do a lightning count just on this storm where we have the warning, and we have 645 lightning strikes in the past 15 minutes. I've also been getting 
getting in some pictures of the hail uh, that has been coming in with this. Let me show you the hail core with that as well. Look at this as you go into these areas here of uh, Barrow County. This has moved on through very large hail. This is right along 85 into Jackson County, Northern Hall County, intense hail with this where you see that purple color right there. That's showing hail about an inch and a half close to two inches. Some of the pictures that we've been getting in tonight showing golf ball size hail with this. That's why we have this new severe thunderstorm warning that will be in effect until 1145 for those areas that are going to be just to the north and to the east of the city. Now we'll put the reflectivity back on. I want to take you down so you can see here. This goes down into Walton County, heavy rain and lightning. This has just cleared Atlanta, so we're fine now, but it's still over to Cab County, Rockdale County, Henry County, moving on down to the south into parts of a Spalding County, Pike County. Another severe thunderstorm warning. This one's going to be expiring very soon. That's moving out of Meriwether County. And then another warning there uh, that is down near uh, the Columbus area. But as you can see, north and west Georgia, we have already cleared out. We just have to push this on over to the east before we will finally begin to see our weather conditions improving here in our area as well. Now, we are breathing a little bit of a sigh of relief in Atlanta because it's ending, but we're not finished with the advisories. We still have some things that we have to get through tonight and even tomorrow. Yeah, until 2 a.m we have that tornado watch in place. Now we did end up dropping the counties. The National Weather Service dropped uh, Cobb County out of it. Uh, Fulton County is now in the clear as well as Douglas County, Forsyth County. But all the other counties here in the metro are still in that tornado watch until 2 a.m. and then of course further south as that line works its way off to the east. So tornado watch means that it is possible to see a tornado. Uh, not that it's imminent, but that it could happen. So we'll watch for that through the early morning hours and then behind this system those winds tomorrow are going to be a real game changer for us as they blow on in after the storms blow out so tomorrow we have a wind advisory all day long 15 to 25 sustained gusts to 35 miles per hour so you may want to tie down anything loose that's around your house that hasn't gotten blown away from the storms. This could bring down some tree limbs as well as weaker trees that with a ground as saturated as it is, seeing some two to six inches of rain. Some of these trees could be uprooted with these gusty winds, Chris. So that is going to be a major concern as we head into tomorrow. And then, of course, the cold air moves in. But we're mostly concerned about the stability of these trees. Yeah, especially with all this rain we've had with the saturated wind. So the good news is tonight, as you're trying to go to bed, we're watching this all move out. So it, we're going to pick this up, put you into future mode. This is at midnight. You can see these showers over to the east and then by one o'clock in the morning, Athens to Macon, and then they're diminishing as they move over to the east as well. So for the nighttime hours, you're going to be able to sleep a little bit better. And then tomorrow, as Sam was mentioning, that wind kicking up, wrap around moisture just in the form of a few light showers, maybe even a couple of flurries in the higher elevations of North Georgia as the cold air is sweeping through here. So it turns wind and colder. We've got gradual clearing tomorrow and then we are finally entering into a dry pattern. RPM also shows uh, that rain moving out. Just a couple of flurries possible in the North Georgia mountains clearing out though during the day tomorrow. But there's that wind kicking up that brings in the colder air that we're going to start to experience tomorrow with a high of only 60 degrees. We're down to 40 Friday morning with a high of 59, mostly sunny skies. 39 Saturday morning with a high of 67, warming back to the 70s, staying dry Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. A couple of more clouds mix in on Tuesday and Wednesday. Still warming back to the 80s for the 13th through the 16th uh, with a couple of showers still in that 11-day look ahead too. So hold on just a little bit longer as these storms push out, but then tomorrow turning windy and colder. Chris, thank you. Coming up next, 18 candidates face off in downtown Atlanta in the fight for the 6th District. The big focus inside the debate coming up. 11 Alive and Landmark are proud to present the Storm Tracker Thunder Truck. Hey, it's Crash Clark. The 85 collapse is impacting thousands. Download the 11 Alive app now and let the traffic trackers guide right, you through this mess. With conditions changing every minute, get the alerts that help you find the best routes. The 11 Alive app. He's a relentless warrior against corruption. John Ossoff. As a national security aide with top secret clearance, John Ossoff saw waste and abuse by military contractors and fought to stop it. As an investigative filmmaker, John Ossoff took on corrupt foreign officials who were stealing U.S. tax dollars and helped send them to jail. If anyone can shake things up in Congress, it's John Ossoff. I'm John Ossoff and I approve this message because Washington should be accountable to you. 
At Regions Bank, we offer the innovative tools you need to make banking simple so you can take your next step in life. Ashley, a real Regions customer, loves that we offer Regions mobile deposit and advanced online banking tools to help her keep track of her money. Sierra uses Android Pay and online planning tools that help her plan for the future. And they both love that there's a helpful Regions banker available to offer personal advice and guidance. Ready to take your next step? Regions Bank is right here in Atlanta. Call, click, or come by. D.C. liberal John Ossoff wants to represent us in Congress, but he doesn't even live here. Ossoff lived and worked with the liberals in Washington. That's why Nancy Pelosi and her allies are pouring millions into his campaign. They know Ossoff strongly supports Obamacare. Repealing it makes no sense. Even with a trillion in taxes and skyrocketing premiums in Georgia. D.C. liberal John Ossoff, he's just not one of us. NRCC is responsible for the content of this advertising. There's a lot of talk about heroes these days, but at Ingalls, we know that a lot of our heroes are a little closer to home. They're the ones who give us what we need for those everyday adventures. That's why we look up to the ones who look out for us. This week at Ingalls, Anjou Bosco Red Pears, $1.28 a pound. Select 28 ounce bushes baked or grilling beans, three for $5. And select 60 to 64 ounce ocean spray juice, two for $4. Ingalls, low prices, love the savings. Who gives you the best in-home Wi-Fi experience? Let's find out. Welcome home. Who's your internet service provider? I have AT&T. Does the Wi-Fi keep up throughout the house? Not very well. Not very well. <laughs> Did you know that Xfinity has the best in-home Wi-Fi experience? She's been telling me that. Let's pretend this is your house. How's the quality up there? I give it a 10. Let's add five devices to the mix. How's yours doing? Yeah, I'm loving this. We got to get with Xfinity. Learn more about the best in-home Wi-Fi experience or get started for $19.99 a month for 12 months. Click, call, or visit an Xfinity store today. I'm Crash Clark. Atlanta Alive is changing, dedicating all of our coverage to help you deal with the I-85 collapse. Send in your questions on Facebook and Twitter with hashtag traffic trackers. All traffic, all the time, only on Atlanta Alive. Sports is sponsored by Sonic. Today, all 18 candidates. 18 candidates in the race for the District 6 congressional seat gathered for a debate. Those are like two baseball teams, starting nine on each side. It was starting to see you <laughs> with that large of a crowd. Yeah, it was a fun night. It was very interesting. A field of congressional hopefuls took the stage at downtown Atlanta's Georgia Pacific headquarters competing to replace Tom Price in the 6th con Congressional District. I moderated the debate where the frontrunner and Democrat John Ossoff was a target for both Republicans and Democrats. Overall, the banter was civil, courtly, and sometimes spirited. Let's be realistic. $4 million was not raised in 10, 20, $30 increments. He is being bankrolled by Nancy Pelosi and the liberal left. What we need in the 6th District is someone who is going to stand up and fight for the people of the 6th District. I'm proud that I have built a diverse coalition that spans the political spectrum here in Georgia of folks who are interested in promoting the economic future of this community. In an exclusive 11 Alive News Survey USA poll, Ossoff received 43% among likely voters. He is followed by Republicans Karen Handel with 15%, Bob Gray with 14%, and Dan Moody with 7%. You can head to 11 Alive for extensive special coverage of the race for District 6. Pepsi tonight apologizing to the King family after critics attacked their new ad. It's a commercial that features Kylie Jenner of the Kardashian family, and she interrupts her photo shoot to bring peace to a protest, and she does uh. this by handing an officer a Pepsi. Critics immediately lashed out at Pepsi, calling this ad insensitive. Dr. Bernice King tweeted this message to Pepsi, quote, if only daddy would have known about the power of Pepsi. Uh, the tweet includes a picture of her father, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., being pushed back by police. Tonight, Pepsi is apologizing, tweeting in response, we at Pepsi believe in the legacy of Dr. King and meant absolutely no disrespect to him or others who fight for justice, end quote. Pepsi has since pulled this ad saying it missed the mark. No kidding. We will be back with one more check on the storms right after this. Liberal extremists will stop at nothing to push their radical agenda. Now they're turning their attention to Georgia and demanding that you vote for John Ossoff for Congress. John Ossoff is one of them. Ossoff will vote with Nancy Pelosi for more spending, bigger government, and a weaker military. Don't let them hijack our congressional seat. 
Stop Ossoff now. Congressional Leadership Fund is responsible for the content of this advertising. Breathe deep. Play some soft music. Find your center. Show some love. Get away to a place where you can be yourself and where no one will judge you. Unless you're into that. Key West, close to perfect, far from normal. I grew up here and I've seen Metro Atlanta's economy grow, but our potential is unlimited. We have great colleges training our young people, but too many leave after they graduate. We still don't have enough of the jobs they're looking for. In Congress, I'll work with anyone to cut wasteful spending, increase our exports, and expand high-tech, biotech, and medical research. That's how we take our economy to the next level. I'm John Ossoff, and I approve this message. Blue Bell Ice Cream is a birthday party's grand finale. A best friend, a sad movie, and a good cry. It's a bridge across a kitchen table, spanning generations. Dessert with new neighbors, soon to be old friends. A toddler getting her first taste of magic. Some say Bluebell is the best ice cream in the country. Oh, my experience with Champion has been fabulous. Champion just offered everything I wanted in a window. During Champion's spring makeover sale, buy two windows and get the third window free. All Champion windows feature Comfort 365 glass and our exclusive limited lifetime warranty, plus 60 months special financing. It was just amazing to see the difference in the house, a remarkable change. Hurry, buy two windows and get the third window free during the Champion spring makeover sale. Call 844 4Champion today. We needed to get rid of that gold frame shower. I wanted to open up the kitchen by removing a wall. And I wanted a huge island for the kids. We needed an expert to do it all for us. If you live in a home built 15 or more years ago, you need to know about Remodeling Expo Center. My friends can't believe how amazing my kitchen turned out. We were given a schedule, they stuck to it, and they completed on time. Call us now to schedule a consultation or stop by our showroom. Time and Temp brought to you by Matilda the Musical at the Fox Theater April 18th through 23rd. Lots of campaign promises, but who's gotten results? As chair of the Fulton County Board of Commissioners, Karen Handel turned a $100 million deficit into a balanced budget without raising taxes. As local Chamber of Commerce president, Handel helped create tens of thousands of jobs. And in Congress, she'll fight to lower taxes. In this race, there's only one proven conservative who will fight for Georgia. Vote Karen Karen Handel for Congress. Ending Spending Inc. is responsible for the content of this advertising. Don't miss the Hot Tub and Swim Spa Blowout Expo this weekend at the Cobb Galleria. Browse the largest display of hot tubs and swim spas in the region from six major brands at up to 50% off. That's the Hot Tub and Swim Spa Blowout Expo this weekend only at the Cobb Galleria. Visit SpaExpo.com. New at Steak and Shake, 24 meals under $4. With handcrafted steak burgers, all beef footlongs, and fresh guacamole made from scratch. Get 24 meals for under $4. New at Steak and Shake. From this moment on, be open to surprises. Let joy run free. Make memories to cherish. Because we are the storytellers of life. Explore, plan, and save at visitorlando.com. Getting ready for a motorcycle ride? Save $10 on Duracell Ultra AGM motorcycle batteries at Batteries Plus Bulbs. I even got a new tattoo. What? Visit batteriesplus.com for a store near you. Hey, I'm Richard Carn, and I know a thing or two about home improvement. And if you're looking to make improvements to your flooring, you should call my pals at 50 Floor. From now until the end of the month, they're having their free installation sale on carpet, hardwood, and laminate, where you can save hundreds, even thousands of dollars. Call today to schedule your free in-home estimate. They'll bring the samples to you. 
Plus, get 12 months same as cash financing and mention promo code Home Improvement, you'll get an extra $100 off. Call 8754. Pick up the phone, we'll be knocking at your door. You sent me to Washington as an outsider to help fix a broken system. With a new president who isn't afraid to shake things up, we finally have a real chance. Trust me, we don't need another career politician up here. Dan Moody cares more about getting results than getting credit. That's so uncommon and exactly what we need. Dan's one of us. I'm Dan Moody and I approve this message.